Under the lights, courtside. It's going down tonight here in Vikings land. This is a live look at Huffman High School cheerleaders hyping it up for the pre-show ahead of tonight's matchup. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Brown here with sports analyst Michael Tart and former Huffman basketball star Carla Smith. Let's talk basketball, guys. The Huffman Lady Vikings are coming off a major win against Paul Bryan in Tuscaloosa, 67 to 28 to be exact. The girls got back into the gym over the weekend to prepare for another matchup tonight against those Gaston City Titans. Right now, the Lady Titans are four and eight. Head coach Lynn Slater said her girls must stay focused to be successful tonight. Zach Sims continues our coverage. We're here with Coach Lynn Slater of Huffman Lady Vikings. Coach, what are you all going to prepare for uh, for the next game? Um, we're going to be preparing defensively. Um, I think that's where everything starts for us is on the defensive side. Um, just trying to get make sure we're in the right positions. Um, just make sure the girls are hustling and giving 100% effort. So what are you all doing to prepare for this game coming up? We are about to go over plays and stuff like that so that we can be ready and have confidence and be focused on our main goal for this game. All right, crew, what will the Lady Vikings have to do to keep the winning momentum going? It's, it's like Coach Slater said, just playing defense. Just play, uh, play a defensive game and just putting them in a trap and stopping them real quick. I mean, they got the offense. They can make it happen. But defense, if you start there first, that's the way they can win the game. Now, now let me enhance that now because we know Coach Slater <laughs> is not just playing defense. It's playing Coach Slater's style oh, yeah. of defense, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And that, that's a little more intense Very than intense. the normal, right? Very intense. Carla, what do you think? So just being consistent, like he said, doing the deep, playing defense, but also – this is the time to be working on their plays and making sure they're executing because we have a better record this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just making sure we're being consistent and working on everything we need to work on. So again, Coach Slater's level of consistency yeah. <laughs> is not making any mistakes, yeah, right? Sure. <laughs> so they have a lot to work on yeah. for the game tonight. But they certainly have a challenge before them. Yeah. Gaston City coming down just up the road. Yeah. They're going to be a little hungry coming to hit the Viking land. Yeah. Gr uh, green and Orange Company, uh, country. Do you think that Huffman has what it takes to meet Coach Slater's standards and what she wants to see out of her team tonight, Michael? I think they do, man. I mean, they come out. I mean, we saw them last week when they took on Pinson Valley, and they played ball, man. I think she know even though they, they won big, she wasn't too – I mean, she was happy, but she won perfection, like she said. So I think coming out and playing that perfect game for her, they can do it. Now, Carla, you're here every day. Talk to us about the work that you've seen the, the Lady Vikings put in uh, between these games. How hard do they work between games? They, they, they work hard. Coach Slater won't allow for anything different, but she definitely doesn't want them to become lackadaisical because they do work hard and because they are winning. She wants them to make sure that she wants to make sure that they're executing, doing what they're supposed to be doing. So if they make a bad play or they mess up, just because they, you know, might be the better team, she's still going to pull you out or whatever fuss at you, whatever she needs to do. So, <laughs> Now, as a former player, Carla, talk a little bit about this period we're heading into the holiday season. You know, some people take it off 
So, some people turn it up. Yeah. What, what do you think Huffman's going to be doing over the three weeks? Because when we get back in January, it's time for region play. Right. So I'm hoping that they'll be, you know, getting ready for those over-the-mountain teams, those teams that they'll see when they get into regional play and, and, and area play and, and playoff, well, championship play. So these are the times that we need to be working on everything and getting ready for those bigger teams because that's where we have the most uh, – fight. <laughs> Absolutely. Our team coverage continues with Tommy Palladino. He's live to tell us how the Lady Titans prepare for tonight's game. All right, I'm here with Coach Jimmy Tinker. Coach, we got the uh, Jones twins. We saw them tear through Pennsylvania Valley last week for the Suffin team. How do you slow them down? Man, it's going to be <laughs> as easier said than done, man. Both of those young ladies, some um, real good basketball players with um, Division One capability. All you can do is um, challenge them, um, try to tire them out, and, and see what happens. It's your first year on the job. What's, what's your biggest strength on this team? Uh, right now, my biggest strength is my, my, my guards. We got a little speed. Um, we still young as far as scoring and all, but, man, we got some speed. So we'll see. Well, Coach, good luck. Steve, back to you. All right, thanks, Tommy. Uh, Brett Oates will join us a little later tonight, but he still composed the BCS Top 5 Girls Coaches Poll for the pre-show. So, I have the pleasure of doing what my partner Brett does. So let's go down this uh, preseason, or I'm sorry, the pre-show's Girls Coaches Poll. In at number one are the 11 and four Winona Dragons who rolled over the Fairfield Tigers by a score of 63 to 18 last Saturday. In at number two are the seven and four Huffman Vikings, who we'll see tonight, who downed Paul W. Bryant 67 to 18. The five and two Parker Thunder and Hurd moved to the number three spot following their 54 to 30 win over the Fairfield Lady Tigers last Friday. And holding on to the number four post are the five and five Ramsey Rams. Now, taking the number five position, guys, are the four and three Colonels, uh, not Colonels, but the Mustangs of Jackson Nolan, who take on the Tigers of Fairfield this evening. What do you guys think about that top five? I have to agree with that. You know, Winona, Winona has a good team. Most of them played on the flag football team that just won a championship last week. So now they can really focus on basketball and really keep that number one ranking if they keep everything going. But like we said, we here at Huffman, we talked about Coach Slater and wanting that perfection and wanting to play the best ball that she can get. Those two top teams right there will go back and forth for that number one spot in the Birmingham City Post. Carla? I have to agree. Uh, we don't know always has had a good program. I've never seen them not have a good program. So I agree with that whole the whole top five. Okay, Huffman fans are hoping to see a turnaround with the school's varsity boys yeah. basketball team. Up next, we'll tell you what the team is doing differently in order to secure a win tonight. Now, before we head to break, let's hear from the Huffman cheerleaders. <laughs> looks to encourage reading outside of the classroom and inside of our homes by at least 15 minutes, three days per week. Now, in order to help our young students succeed, we need total commitment across the board. That's parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, mentors, and so many more. So join us. Join us in sharing the love of reading with our kids. To learn more, or to volunteer to read with our students. Please visit behamufirst.org. That's behamufirst.org. Or at 205-320-0879. Listen, thanks to all of you for being Page Pals. You're watching BCS Under the Light, Courtside. You're looking live at the Huffman Cheerleaders 
we're getting close to two great basketball matchups inside the gym here at Huffman High School. Welcome back to BCS Under the Lights, Courtside Edition. I'm Steve Brown here with sports analyst Michael Tart and former Huffman High basketball star Carla Smith. Now, Huffman's boys basketball team is coming off of a tough loss against powerhouse Paul Bryan in Tuscaloosa. Tonight, the Vikings will face the Gaston City varsity boys basketball team. The Titans are currently 8-5, and, and Zach Sims had an opportunity to catch up with the Vikings to see what will they do differently to win more games. We're here with Huffman's Coach Steve Ward. Coach, what, what are you doing to prepare for, uh, for this week's game? Well, you know, we're doing something a little different, uh, watching a little bit more film, uh, talking about a few things before we actually get on the court, uh, so it'll kind of translate over. Uh, but, you know, we just got to get back to our standard, playing to our standard. Here with Justin Nelson of Huffman Vikings. Justin, what are you all going to do to get back in this uh, win column? Uh, we're just going to work harder and practice, fix the little mistakes that we've been making throughout the year. And we're just going to, we got to execute through the game plan. So we've been just talking with each other, trying to get better trust between each other. And just, we knew a new team together. Everybody knew playing with each other. We were just trying to get everything back right. All right, everyone. This may sound simplistic, but what should the boys do tonight, Carla, to win this game, other than score more points than gas? <laughs> it's definitely going to have to be that, and it has to be a more collective effort instead of just peanut. Kayvon's going to have to step up. Uh, Justin's going to have to step up. So they're going to have to just be more productive um, offensively, mainly. Now, now, you touched on something there. Peyton Wiggins, uh, the, the main guy, for, for Huffman can't be the only guy. It's got to be a team effort, got to move that ball, and really that's the only way I think you're going to free him up. Mm -hmm. We saw in our coverage last week against Pinson, obviously a top-ranked right, team in the state, mm -hmm. Peyton was, was, had a difficult time getting untracked, and it was not until the second half that he really was able to make a real impact in the game, I think. So I think you hit on something there. Mike, what are your views? I think it goes back to what Coach and Justin Nelson says, just trusting in each other and just playing team ball. Just get out, play team ball, put the trust in each other, and let each other go out and do their thing. But they, they said they watched the film. Hopefully that translates on the court like they said. So just keep watching more film and just trusting in each other, and hopefully we can see that show out tonight. I hear you because that, that goes right into what Carly's saying because they've got to trust that these other guys can do what they do. And uh, I, 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 the, his name slips me, but the center came up big last week for Huffman in the fourth quarter. Kendrick? Yeah, yeah. the big guy. He, yeah. he showed us something last week. Oh, yeah. So they got to trust each other. And I want to add, they got to have confidence in themselves right. to take yep. those shots right. and, to, and, to, and to go to the rack when they have those opportunities. Yeah. So let's hop back into the BCS top five boys BCS coaches poll. And let's see what, what they said about that. In okay. the top position are the seven and four. Thundering heard from Parker after dropping one to the Fairfield Tigers Saturday, 55 to 76. And at number two are the six and seven Rams of Carver who topped the Carver Panthers uh, from Atlanta last week, 61 to 35. At number 35 are the Dragons of Winona, who are 6-5 and five, and got past the center point Eagles last week, 71-59. Holding on to the number four spot are the 4-4 four four Rams of Ramsey, who fell 62-53 to, to the Central Red Devils. And at number five are the Huffman Vikings, who are 2-7. and seven. All right, team, what do you think about that top five BCS boys? Carla? Um, well, I'm glad to see Huffman in there. I, I keep wanting Fairfield to get in there somewhere. Um, but, you know, I'm fine. As long as Huffman's in there, I don't care. Right. <laughs> Look, I like Parker being number one because those boys be jumping out the gym, man. They put on the yeah. show every time they play, man. I like to see that. But also, I'm, I'm, I'm in Huffman, so I, I, I got to talk about Huffman. I'm glad to see them now. But like we said, they keep playing that consistent ball and keep trusting each other. They can move up in the rankings. Yeah. Absolutely. Those These are early polls. And we know a lot of teams like Huffman have been playing difficult schedules to prime themselves for region play. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how the poll pans out as we get into the meat of the season. Up next, Michael Tart will introduce you to members of Huffman High School's track team. 
The pre-show continues after this break. A lot of water and a lot of pressure. Huffman High School senior Austin Benedict will have to get used to this kind of work as he aspires to be a Birmingham firefighter after high school. I like helping people as well. Like ever since I've been growing up, I've just been such a helpful person. And I like that they do a lot of strong things and you know, I'm a very strong person. The Fire Science Academy students don't mind soaking in the in-classroom knowledge, but it's hands-on experiences like learning CPR, quick dress, and working alongside Birmingham firefighters that excite them the most. It's very interesting. What's interesting about it? Like about CPR, learn about letters and stuff like that. Chief Melvin Brown is a retired Birmingham firefighter and now instructor over this class. He says the overall goal is to get the students interested in becoming first responders after high school. We have some that are already interested as you interviewed one earlier, but we also have some who have no interest at all but once they get into the class and they realize uh, how exciting it is and I, I have firefighters come up and talk with them and then I have ex exhibits where they come out and come outside and see the firefighters doing some of the different activities and also incorporate them in some of those training activities as well. Some of them do become interested. The students get a chance to take hiring tests annually through the Jefferson County Personnel Board. They are also afforded opportunities to participate in Birmingham Fire and Rescue Service Departments high school fire science competition. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. You're watching BCS Under the Light Courtside. Welcome back to BCS Under the Lights Courtside. I'm sports analyst Michael Tart. We're here now nearing the six o'clock tip off for the Lady Vikings taking on the Gaston City Titans. Huffman High School track team competed in its first indoor track meet over the weekend. Head coach Dorico Tilly and members of the track team are here to tell us about that first meet of the season. Coach Tilly, tell me how did things go for that first meet? Uh, the first meet this weekend went extremely well. We had a couple of PRs. Um, my Devin um, ran a, a huge PR this weekend. Brianna did extremely well in her races. Um, we got a lot of young kids that we're bringing up and they're doing extremely well. This just tell me some of the goals you set for this season and for some of your, your athletes with you. Our objective is to run faster than we ran last year, and that's what we started off doing so far. My, um, my sprinter, Lucas, he um, ended up running 7.16. He ended the season with 7.16, so that's that's a good start to the year. Um, Kyla did extremely well as well. Just tell me a little bit about your team, about Devin. Just tell me about these people you got standing with us. Uh, these are my leaders on the team, Kyla, Kyla Graves, Lucas Giles, Brianna Fears, and Devin Blocker. Um, they have been with me since, I guess they went in ninth grade. So um, they're, they're extremely good kids. Just talk about this team. You said they've been with you since the ninth grade. Just talk about this team being able to grow with you and you being able to develop them. Um, over the years, we've been able to do a lot of great things. We've made it to state over the past couple years. We've been ranked. Um, top two or three in the state in all our relays over the past few years. Um, this year uh, is looking kind of finicky. Hopefully I can work something out with the young kids that I have out there. Hopefully we can develop and, and get them up. Devin, man, just tell me how does it feel to just be on this team and get the season going this year? Um, it most definitely feels good. Uh, they constantly improve with the coaching and uh, just having the ability to get better every day as we're going forward. Y'all going to get that boom map this year, coach? Uh, I wouldn't say that. Um, I'm a re I'm a realist. Okay. Um, our team is mostly based on sprinters. Um, you have to have pole vault, javelin. Um, you have to have the field events. You have to have the distance. We don't have. We suffer from distance. So I'm still working in the school trying to get a few distance runners out to help us. I appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you for bringing the players out with us. And that'll be it for the pregame show. The main show starts right now. From Birmingham to the world, this is VCS Under the Lights. I'm your host, Steve Brown, here at Huffman High School in Viking Stadium, getting ready for a doubleheader of basketball tonight, featuring the homestanding Huffman Vikings 
and the visiting Gaston City Tigers. What a time. What a night we're going to have as we watch the Lady Vikings get our doubleheader started tonight as we enjoy ourselves with BCS Under the Lights Courtside Edition. You're seeing one of the top programs in the state of Alabama, dare say, in the United States of America, when you talk about lady basketball, high school level, look at these Huffman Lady Vikings. I'm joined by my man, Michael Tart, who's sitting in for Carol Smith Road tonight. Mike, how you doing? I'm just filling in, man. I feel good just to fill in. Hey, man, you, you're more than a fill-in. You're a main off, ingredient, I'm baby. I'm coming off the bench today, man. <laughs> Absolutely. But for those who don't know, Michael gets it done behind the scenes. Otherwise, he's multi-talented, and, and tonight he's going to be multitasking. Well, we're some eight minutes and 39 seconds away from this game. Again, the Lady Vikings, one of our favorite teams, one of the premier teams in Birmingham City Schools, Michael. That is true, man. I love covering the Huffman's basketball team, man, especially the girls. They got the twins out here, man. They always exciting to watch, man. I always like checking them out, man. They did that thing last year. I wish they could have got that blue map. But they still did their thing in the tournament, man. And I think they, you're going to see some great things for them this season as well. They really did. When he talks about the twins, he's talking about uh, Tamiria Jones and her twin sister, Jamiria Jones, two outstanding leaders on this Huffman Viking team. And uh, we'll be going over the lineup in a, in a little bit. But you are going to be in store for a treat tonight. Now, one thing I saw, Michael, that concerned me, was that uh, Jamiria had an ankle brace on, and I, I looked at her when she came out. She does not have it on now, and she's moving pretty good, but she was walking quite gingerly uh, as she was heading into the locker room to get dressed. Man, I hope she cleared that up, man, because I want to see her put on the show. So hopefully that was just for precautionary measures, and hopefully she can come out and play her best game tonight. So Absolutely. So hopefully, hopefully that's, that's just... Just a little, a little, a little speed bump, just to slow her down. But hopefully, she can come out and play tonight. And we certainly want that for you out there, all across the world, checking us out on BCS under the lights, court side edition, because she and her sister are certainly two phenomenal athletes. But they aren't the only two on that Huffman squad. They have a team well, of young team. ladies that can ball, and they ball at a very high level. Mike. Oh, yes, they do, man. You got Coach Slater who, who expects nothing but the best. And I'm going to say that again, nothing but the best. Absolutely. <laughs> she wants that perfection. Even though she wins, she's, she still gets on them, man. She still wants them to, to execute the plays. So Coach Lynn uh, Slater is a 300-win coach. Uh, certainly has already made a place for herself in the Alabama High School Hall of Fame. Uh, so we look forward to seeing Coach Slater uh, in the future getting that level of recognition. But, yes, indeed, she is a high-quality coach, assisted by uh, Coach Patty Reza and a couple other great assistant coaches that round off that staff. And you talk about her being a quality coach. It shows up here on the court. I mean, it's, you, can see it, you can see it within her players that she's coaching this team up and they're, they're doing what she's telling them to do. They're not going off and being individuals. They're operating as a team, and you can see that Coach Slater has that influence over them. Absolutely, and they play hard from tip-off <laughs> to, the, to the last buzzer. Until they take off their socks. They take off their Man, shoes, exactly. Man. <laughs> exactly. They, hu they hustle to, after the game to the, to the shower. Indeed, man, and, and that's the kind of team that, that Coach Slater has. As you see Coach Slater on the, on the bench, she's so intense. I mean, she's sitting over there now. See, I don't think I've ever seen a smile. I know. I, I, maybe I, I did get her to smile last year in a post-game interview. I have seen her smile once. But, yeah. Uh, well, And then the second time, the young lady, I can't remember the young lady's name they had last year who reached her milestone with points. I, I think uh, she either. scored a couple thousand points over her career here at Huffman. And uh, she smiled that night. But you're right. Uh, she, she, she doesn't play around, man. Not at all. She keeps that intense look, man. She wants her team to, to take on that look and be intense as well and play intense basketball. Absolutely. And, and that's, what you, that's what you have to do. That's the way you have to be. You have to be the way you want your team to be. You, you have to present the kind of persona mm -hmm. and the level of expectations 
uh, that, that's going to demand the level of performance that you need to see out of your team for them to be successful. I agree. You don't want a soft-looking coach. No, not at all. You want nobody out here soft, man. Absolutely. You want somebody that's hard that's going to put you to work so you can produce out there on the floor. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that uh, Carla Smith said in, in, in our pre-show, you know, well, actually the pre-show last week, she talked about uh, how these students should really be uh, uh, excited to have the facilities that they have. And they really should take advantage of, of, the, of the gym, the weight room, the, the practice gym, and all the amenities that she did not have when she was an athlete here at Huffman High School. I agree, man. I think that's the biggest thing going on with just high school sports is you hear people talk about facilities and you, you literally read in the paper, you see school districts building these major facilities for these sports, basically for the sports department. So these things are needed if you really want to succeed. And it's nice to see this gym right here in Huffman. This is a nice facility. And I think these students should take a part in like even just keeping it clean. That's like, right. Just, just take pride in this and you work, go to that workout room and work out because these are top-notch facilities that they have. And when these teams use them to their best of their, their abilities, man, you, you can see the results out here on the floor, even on the field. Absolutely. You're right, Michael. And I think we've, we've definitely seen that on the gridiron because, you know, I remember vividly uh, when we didn't have those stadiums, the, the football coaches were saying, hey, we need stadiums. We need facilities, and, uh, and, and since we've had them, we've seen not only have we gotten to the playoffs, which we were not doing, yep. we're going far in the playoffs and even winning state championships. And even with that being said, it also brings in the fans. It gives the fans something excited to, to see. Like, oh, look at our stadium. I would like to come out and be a part of that in some, some old stadium that's or an old gym that's small and tight. So. It also brings in the fan support as well. Like we were here last week, and it was a packed house, man. When they were playing Pennsylvania Valley. It was packed out, even for the girls' game, too. It really I mean, was. It, it was a great basketball atmosphere uh, last week, indeed. Yes, indeed. We're some two minutes and 23 seconds. Uh, if the guys in the truck are ready, we can get ready to go down this roster for the Huffman Lady Vikings and let you see them up close and personal and some of the great shots that our camera crew was able to take uh, as they went out during the preseason and they really did some nice up close and personal shots of all of our BCS athletes. For the Lady Vikings, let's take a look at the, li the lineup for the Lady Vikings this year's 23 24 edition. Brianna Robin, Southport, double zero. Tiberia, Lillian Brown, number three. Zaria Johnson, number four. Number 10, Caitlin Mathis, number 12. Jamiria Jones, number 20. And Jeronikia Goodwin. And number 25, Jada Kelser. Number 30, Morgan Campbell. Number 32, Johanna Moore. And number 40, Jamika Stringer. Those are the Huffman High School 23-24 girls, ladies, Vikings, led by head coach Lynn Slater. Yes, indeed. We're just about ready for action here at Viking Gymnasium on the campus of Huffman High School on the eastern side of Birmingham, Alabama. So great to be here, Michael, uh, highlighting our, one of our great high schools, this particular school, led by the esteemed John Lyons, principal, uh, as I was speaking to uh, Carla off, off campus, I mean off camera, not only did she say uh, she wished that she had had consistency <laughs> in the facilities, she said she wished she had had a, the same coach for four yeah. years and the same principal. And I was just speaking to how, you know, consistency of leadership makes a difference. <laughs> uh, we know Huffman has been making strides and improving academically, and, 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 it's, and it's due to the consistency of leadership. You can't change leaders every two, three years, whether it's a principal, a football, a basketball coach, and expect them to have success. 
We're going to give it over to the stadium announcer and allow you to hear the stadium announcer introduce the starters for tonight. There you have the lineups of the home standing Huffman Vikings, the starters, that is, as well as the starters for our visiting Gaston City Titans. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are about ready for some basketball action. It's a good night for basketball. Vikings Gymnasium. Yes, it is, Michael Tart. It is a good night for basketball. The Gaston Lady Titans already out on the court. Not too tall of a team in terms of their starters. However, as you see, Huffman is not a very tall team either. However, their, their taller starters, the Jones sisters, are their front court players. And they do quite well. In fact, they, they, they do a good job of inside, outside. They will post up. They will go front court, back court. And as you see there, Jamiria wins the tip. That leads to two points. He's talking with less than five seconds, and Huffman is already on the board. And Huffman institutes their press. The Titans are able to break it. Open shot in the corner for a moment. She passes it out top, getting it around, fakes it. Now to the opposite corner, almost stolen, and we got contact and a foul. That foul's gonna be on Robbins, her first. You see Huffman's defense is all over the court, man. They're, they're just attacking the ball already. Absolutely, last week against Penson, one of the things that, that we talked about was Huffman cutting off the sideline on that press. Let's see if they got that corrected in the offseason. And we've got a turnover. Jamiria get it, gets it in to Jamiria. Jamiria goes down and posts up. Up to the high post. Look down low, but they swing it outside. Down low now to Jamiria Jones. She bangs, she goes up, no. Gets her own rebound, scraps. Now that she's on the floor. Tie up, possession will go to the Titans. You see from the onset, looking to get it down inside to Jamiria as Huffman sets up their 1 2 2 and they create a turnover. So Huffman to get the inbound and under their goal. Let's see if they dial up a nice play here to score off of this inbound possession. Players are moving. Looking just to get it in. They get it back to Robbins up top. 
around the horn, inside. Bobble back out to Jones. She looks, contemplates, drives, goes over with the left, no. But Jamiria is there, misses the, and we got a foul on the Titans. The scrappy muffler ladies are getting their hands on the ball, Michael. They're going back and forth, just looking at a real, real physical right now. Six minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The score is 2-0. Vikings with the lead. Jones to Robbins. Pick set by Jones. Jamiria Jones stolen by Williams, and she goes coast to coast and is deflected out of bounds. Looks like she lost control of the yeah. ball when she went up for that layup. Yeah, she was saved that time by Mathis, who deflected it after she lost control. Now we'll see what Gaston City can dial up on the inbound under their goal, and it's deflected, stolen. Nice feel. Way to have hands up by Jamiria Jones. Robbins looking for Tamiria Jones. Mathis fakes the three. Oh, passes oh. it. Jones sees it. I think that was acting for Kelsey. Yeah, I thought he was away, too. Away, <laughs> but Jamiria was there on the spot. She happened to be in the right place at the right time for that one. Absolutely. Gaston City stepped out of bounds, but they did not cut off that sideline. Coach Slater pointed that out to Jamiria. They've got to cut off that sideline on that full court pressure. Scores 4-0, 5.59 and counting. Jamiria Jones working from the top, drives and draws a foul. That foul is on number one, Tinker. for the Titans. Again, under the goal inbound for the Vikings. They're looking, looking into the corner to Jamiria Jones. Jump step, oh, they call it travel. Full court pressure, hands up. Setting those traps already. Taken oh, away nice. or at least tied up. Avoiding the foul. Ball will go to Huffman, I believe. That's some of that defense we talked about earlier. That's right, Mike. Aggressive defense. Active hand. Nice pass inside to Javeria. She couldn't get it off the backboard. Pulled down by Kelsey, no. Now found by Mathis, no. They're still fighting for it, and they're down on the floor. One thing I can say, the girls are getting the rebounds. They keep the ball on their side. They're getting those rebounds, putting the second shots. They just have to hit that second chance shot. That's right. And they're getting even the third, and, and Coach Slater is reminding <laughs> them of those opportunities. Hands up, and it's deflected and That's stolen. Tamiria Jones, Euro step, and she missed the left hand attempt. Gaston is pushing it up. They got a girl back. She bobbled it, and it's blocked. But they called a oh. late foul to the consternation of the Viking bench. 4-0 remains the score. Five minutes and 14 seconds to go in this first quarter. The Huffman girls are up and down the court. They they're, are. They're, they're not taking any chances. They're playing some ball. And number 32 for the Titans converts on a first free throw. That may, in fact, be the first possession Gaston City has had this defense <laughs> on their end. She misses the second. Oh, and the Vikings the were lazy on that rebound, and understandably, Coach Slater is living. Gaston gets it into the high post. Back out to the wing, fakes the three. That's a trap. Slater one. wants to trap. Gaston's working it. She throws a little too hot, oh, and it goes out of the ride. Mathis pushing it up for the Vikings. 
picks up a dribble, finds Jamiria Jones at the top of the key. Over back to Mathis. Spin move. Nice. Nice jumper. Nothing nice but the jumper. bottom of the net. Mathis for two. That was a nice jumper there. Six to one. She just throws it away. It's the score, and we just had a turnover. Pressure creates those things. Jamiria Jones brings it up the court. Over to Jamiria, who gets it at the high post, but dribbles it out. Over to Matthews. She's open. To Jamiria on the wing. No. Rebound, no, by Kelsey. No, she misses. Back up, no, she misses again. Tapped over by Mathis, kicked out by Jones to Jones. She drives oh. two points. Jamiria Jones, eight to one for the Vikings. And they steal it, oh, but they can't control it. Almost a double dribble there by the Titans. She's trying to dribble through the press and she, they get a timeout. Almost a carry right there. Coach Almost. Slater wants more. She says, come to me. <laughs> They're up by seven, and she wants more. Absolutely. <laughs> you're, at, you're here watching BCS Under the Light, courtside edition. We are here at Viking Stadium on the campus of Huffman High School. As the Huffman High School Lady Vikings hold an eight to one lead over the visiting Gaston City Tigers. I'm your host, Steve Brown. With my man, Michael Tart. Mike, what do you think so far, man, is the way this game is going? Huffman's defense is making their presence felt early. They're making a statement. I mean, if you look at this game, Gaston City hasn't gotten a field goal in yet. I mean, they got a free throw, but no field goal. So you got to see that the defense is playing hard, and they're, they're forcing them into traps. They're forcing them into turnovers. So they can't even get a field goal in yet. So we'll see what happens on this possession. Gaston yeah, gets like it we got another turnover. throws it away. <laughs> that defense is forcing the turnover, so they're making them work. That is right. The pressure defense of the Lady Vikings. Three minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Tamiria Jones over to Mathis. He drives. Misses. Out of bounds, though, off of Gaston City. Huffman will inbound and underneath their goal. They set up a stack at the free throw line. Inside to Jamiria, who skies, but puts it low, loses it. Mathis has to fall on it oh, wow. to save it, throws it away. Amazing she didn't travel there. Picked up by the Titans. They don't cut off the sideline, and they foul. That is going to be one thing I know Coach Slater will be working on over the next couple of weeks. They've got to get over, and you've got to get a foot, Mike, on that line or on out of bounds so that they either run into you and you draw the charge or they dribble out of bounds. You can't let them get by you. Can't that's let them You do cannot it. let them blow by you, and that's what we saw happen now. And do you see what that foul was on for the Vikings? I did not. No, I did. Stolen by Jamiria. Up top to Tiberia. Showtime. Left hand finish. T. Jones for two. Ten to one. And they continue to press. It's Got a trap. nice trap. She stuck. Oh, she stole and it. And Tiberia takes it. Nice. No look pass. Oh, and she misses the bunny. Robbins misses the two. No look pass attempt. Stolen by the Viking. Up top, just over the outreach hand. I don't know if Mathis touched herself. She realized she didn't go for that one like she could have. Substitution in for the Vikings. Coach pulls out Robbins after missing that bunny. The press is on as it will continue to be on for the Lady Vikings. They press all night. The Jones girls at the top. Gaston City moving. Penetration. Nice layup attempt, no. She missed everything. T. Jones off and running. Jamiria out to the side and she draws the foul. I think Jamiria let her know that time <laughs> uh, I was open. 
And she's she's right to marry. She was open. She was open. She was open. <laughs> To the line for the Vikings, number one, Tamiria Jones. She makes it. She makes them both. She has six points on the night, and that makes the score 12 to one. Two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Gaston breaks the press. Now what do they do with it? Ooh. They get it inside and convert. Two points. The first field goal. The first Michael. field goal. <laughs> 12 to three is Other the Other two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Tamaria brings it up. Brings it to Jamiria. She hesitates, drive, and oh. nice dish to her sister, who bobbles in and steps out of bounds. Trapped in the corner, stolen, but not controlled. Out of bounds. The one, two, two of Huffman is lethal. That trap can be frustrating for you. You're just, really trying to get up, just trying to get up the floor. But now strategically, number 12 does not want to keep running to the corner. You got to stay out you of gotta, the corner yeah. right here. Yeah, you got to stay out got of her. And nice aggressive play by Sister Mathis. Good sportsmanship on both girls' part. Ball goes back to Huffman. Good hard play. Jamiria prepares to inbound to Tamiria. Tamiria, 4-3, oh. and that is our first Aflac three-pointer of the night. Oh, Stolen, not, oh. but they call a foul. That was an Aflac three-pointer sponsored by James W. Brown, sales consultant for Aflac, district sales coordinator. Give him a call, 205-945-1130. Our first three pointer of the night. Yeah, it was. As the Vikings set up the lethal 1 2 2. And now they morphed a bit into a 1 2 1 1. Still trapping up top. She's got it over. And they found the girl under the goal. 32 goes up, misses the bunny. Oh. And the ladies are tied up and they go down. I love the way the ladies are scrapping on that court. They scrapping. They are scrapping. No loose. <laughs> Ball goes unfought for. And Gaston City will take it underneath their goal. 48.7 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Into the corner. Defense is there quickly. Jamiria Jones up top into the opposite wing. Back up top. Fake three. Fake pass. Back to the wing. Three launch. Bam. Another half lap three-pointer. That one by Gaston City. Miss Sheffield for three. 15 to six is the score. Only a nine-point game now. Nice wrist action, but it was an air ball by Mathis. Rebound by the Vikings. Blocked by the Titans. And with three seconds, 13 seconds, I'm sorry, they're coming up the court. Can get this game a little closer, but they lose the ball. Deflected out of bounds by the Vikings, 8.4 seconds, and what was a blowout has kind of gotten a little close, only a nine-point game, and Gaston can get it down to seven. Gaston is trying to get through that press. They're trying to get through that trap, and they're getting through just a little bit. Just a little, just three a seconds. Little bit. She launches a three, no, and the first quarter comes to an end, and the score is your home standing Huffman, Lady Vikings, 15, and the visiting Gaston City, Lady Titans, six. This is BCS Under the Lights, courtside edition. Let's go down to the truck, Mike. Let the fellas give us a identification break. What's up, everybody? This is Mayor Randall with the 
and you are watching BCS Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. You just heard from the mayor of this great city, Mayor Randall Woodfin, supporting BCS Under the Lights as he supports Birmingham City School athletics and everything Birmingham. We got a great mayor, don't we, Michael? They do. And it's also nice to have somebody who was also a member of the school board himself. Absolutely. Former school that. board yeah. member, absolutely. Someone who knows the inside, the struggles, the victories, the strengths, and all of that. Mayor Randall Woodman. Big time supporter of Birmingham City Schools. Absolutely. We're about to begin the second quarter of the game. Huffman will begin the quarter with the possession, leading 15 to 6. Shout out to all the Huffman alumni watching the game on the World Wide Web. <laughs> Tell your friends, pass it on. Let yourself, let them get a little taste of home. As the Jones girls play the two girl game, inside, outside, drive, no, rebound. Gaston City. Pressure applied by Huffman. And Gaston is pushing it. Dead girl's corner, but she gets it out of there. Back out to the corner, to the wing for a three. Oh, yeah. What a three. Beautiful what a three. Shot. Oh, yeah. Another Aflac three pointer. Now, Huffman is going to have to watch that because those threes start raining in then you can see that that, that our deficit eat up that, real quick. That lead's going to go away. Yes, it will. It will evaporate. Another miss by Huffman. And Gaston is pushing it up. Nice lead pass, but a little too far. Just a little too much spice on that pass. Yeah, three-pointers would eat a lead like uh, the cookie monster eats cookies, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> So I'm sure Coach Slater is telling them to extend the defense. Press harder. <laughs> Tamiria Jones brings it up. She hadn't been out of the game yet. She nor her sister, nor Kelsey. She pulls up. No. They're battling for the rebound. Tamiria bangs it around but can't convert. And we've got another tie-up. Gaston City will keep possession on that one. 15 to 9 is the score. Only a six point deficit. Ball fake. Pass it to the wing. They're moving it well to break their press. Good look. 32 is sitting back there. They get it up. Back up top now. Four has been dangerous. Over to the corner. Zero has hit, hit a three herself. Four saves it. And they run into each other out of bounds. Turnover. Six minutes and 22 seconds before halftime. 15 to 9 is the score. Huffman preparing to inbound. Jamiria taking the time, sizing up the Titan defense to the high post to Jamiria. They've double teamed her. She steps back for a three. Oh. Yeah. Another Aflac three-pointer, Jamiria Jones. We talked about how those threes can eat away nice at a lead. Nice bounce pass to create the situation for Mathis to foul. Number 32 has been getting open underneath that goal, Michael. They just got to get her the ball. They're finding her, no, absolutely. No. And when they found her, she's either scored or she's drawn a foul. So she'll go to the line for for, I believe, two shots. And she misses the first. And she sinks the second one with pretty form. Now, I guess the city hadn't been setting up a press. I guess they're not a, a pressure team. At least they're not trying to press against this Hubble squad. Nice move oh, by nice Robin. Move. She misses the layup, though. 18 to 10 is the score. Gaston City pushing it up. Yeah. 
five minutes and 29 seconds. Nice pump fake. Remaining before halftime. Oh. Stolen the by the Vikings. Jamiria Jones pushing it up. Out to her sister in the corner. Nice looking shot, but it's off. Rebound by Mathis. She's fouled, and she'll go to the line. The awareness on this Huffman team is just through the roof. Mathis will go to the line for two shots. She misses the first. Michael, I was sitting here a few moments ago and saw Davenport walking up with the dictionary. I was like, <laughs> what, what have I said wrong? He's bringing me a collegiate dictionary in the middle of the broadcast, but he was only propping up the camera. <laughs> I thought he was going to give us a spelling test. <laughs> Absolutely. And she makes a second free throw. <laughs> and... The Titans convert for two. Four minutes and 58 seconds remaining before halftime. And yes, we have a dictionary if we need it. Oh. Two points by Jamiria Jones. A fantastic shot for two. Gaston gets it over the press and finds 32 again under the goal. She bullies her way in, but Jones says not this time and rejects it. Out of bounds. And she's always there. She is there. She's waiting. Gaston City is inbounding under the goal. Pump fake. She thought about it. As Coach Smith Rowe likes to say, the triple threat position. <laughs> she's back to four. Four lunches. She took it, it this time. No. Air ball. A little bit out of her range. Rebounded by Kelser. Gives it to Jamiria Jones. I love the way the Vikings are disciplined. They just don't force anything. They, they take opportunities mm -hmm. when they are there. That's good coaching. They take Short their time. Short jumper, no. Rebounded by the Titans. She's trying to go all the way, oh. and she throws it away. All right, let's go down to Fred with the sideline interview with one of the Huffman cheerleaders. All right, so we are live here with Mariah Beth. She is a junior here at Huffman High School, a cheerleader to be exact. So tell me, what is it about cheering that you like? It opened up a lot of opportunities for me, and it kept me out of, like, bad crowds, kept me out of a lot of trouble. What is the sister? I see you all a lot here, so you all have great chemistry. What is the sisterhood like? Uh, it's Three really like being real sisters. Like, we love seconds. each other to death, really. And we trust each other. Like, we talk every day like real friends, like... So do you see yourself cheering after high school? Yes. Where would you like to cheer? I want to go to like, I want to go to a PWI, maybe Alabama. Okay. All right, well, you know, stay at it, stay dedicated, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Back to you all, Steve and Michael Tart. Great, great interview by, by Fred on the sideline. I hope you enjoyed the split screen view. <laughs> we don't want you to miss any of the action, even though we bring you the best of our BCS scholar athletes and our cheerleaders are certainly athletes as we see a little foot shuffling there by Brianna Robbins and that's a traveling. I think it's also nice that you get to highlight the, the students of Birmingham City Schools, cheerleaders, football players, basketball players. We just did the track team just celebrating them and, and their accomplishments. Absolutely great camera angle there as we look at this Huffman Press. We get to see it from the big view inside they're they going to have to seal the back <laughs> end, though, because if they execute those back end passes, that is an opportunity for easy buckets for Gaston City. That's an easy way to get back into this game, too. That can turn into three-point plays as well. It really can. Timeout by Coach Slater. Probably something she's about to address. 21-12 <laughs> to is the score. Three minutes and 17 seconds remaining before halftime. This is BCS under the lights, courtside. Edition. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. John Lyons, principal of Huffman High School. And I'm Dr. Terrell Smith, media specialist. And you're watching BCS Under the Lights. Go Vikes! All 
All right, we're back live now as you hear the house DJ getting it up with some of the top 40 hits from, from across this great land right now that will get the crowd moving. Hang around for our halftime because we do a little special thing around here where we have a little dance thing going, so you don't want to miss that. It can be as entertaining as the game, Michael. <laughs> we got some dancing going on right now. <laughs> I know, man. You know, put it on, and uh, the rhythm, the rhythm will, will, will get them going. Look at our police officer down there. He's getting warmed up for, for, for the halftime. Nicky Seaborn down there getting it warmed up. Did you see the, st the stand over there, the fans over there? You know, he said, she said, hey. You know what's going on when they hit that mic? Hey. <laughs> Three too minutes. Bad they cut the music off. 15 <laughs> seconds before halftime. And Tamiria sets him up. High post pass to her sister, Jamiria, who wiggles. She's double teamed and she's traveled. Great defense by the Lady Titans then. You got to catch, turn, and shoot, catch, turn, and drive but not hesitate. Gaston brings it up, swings it over around to the high post. Nice form, and it falls through. Two points for Williams. Coach Slater is turning it up, 21 to 16, and she needs to because the Titans are battling their way back into this game. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Slowly halftime. chipping away at that lead. They are. Inside, Jamiria tries to go under, and she's traveled. Another turnover. Substitution. Someone needs to come out. And she gets Jamiria Jones out of the game. Give her a little rest. Titans come up, two minutes and 20 seconds, and counting, back over, pump fake, and over here to the wing. Oh, she almost got it, but she missed it. Vikings not giving up any second shot, doing very good on the defensive rebounding board tonight. Mathis brings it up, gets it over to Tamiria Jones, in the corner to number 14, who drives, but misses. Actually, that was number 45 on that shot. The Vikings into the corner. She puts up a three, rims out. Nice offensive rebound, though, for the Titans. One of few. Another three launch. No. Rebound by the little lady. And she's tied up, and Huffman would take possession. Scrappy defense pays off. Get your hands on the ball, tied up. And they can go either way. That's right. And I always like to tie up because if you don't get it, you're going to get it the next time. That's so right. <laughs> every tie up is good for you. Huffman trying to find something here. Inside. Nice two point move by Kelsey. Nice low post move by 25. Huffman drops back now out of the press uncharacteristically. Oh, and she's trapped, but she gets away by throwing it off the leg of the Lady Viking. She dribbled right into that corner trap, but she was able to get out of it by throwing it off the bike. Gaston City working the perimeter pretty good, and we got a foul now on Jamiria Jones. Only the second foul for the Vikings so far in the game. Gaston City will have a side out. Tough defense by Jamiria. Push that high post up to the top of the key. Baseline shot, rims out, rebounded by the Vikings. Mathis clears it out with some room. Jamiria. No, Tamiria brings it up. Tamiria's out. Mathis back to Tamiria Jones. Over here to the wing, and 45 throws it away. 33 seconds before halftime. Kind of backed off on the press. 
23 to 14 is the score. Vikings with the lead. Gaston City trying to do something here to cut into it. The wing is open. No. Rebounded Huffman. And Huffman brings it up. Eight seconds. Robbins trying to make something happen. Gives it to Tamiria Jones. Misses the three. Gaston with the rebound. And that concludes the first half. The score, 23-14 at halftime here at Viking Gymnasium on the campus of Huffman High School. We're going to uh, bring you a, a quick word with Coach Slater, head coach of the Lady Huffman Vikings. Certainly they're excited to go ahead and get in the locker room and make some quick adjustments. Let's throw it on down to Fred, because I know Coach Slater is ready to get in there and deal with her <laughs> X's and O's. Take it away, Fred. Yes, we have. We are here live with Huffman's uh, head girls basketball coach, Lynn Slater. Coach, I know you're very upset. Talk about the first half. It was terrible. What will you all do differently to secure the Oh, they're going to have to pick this up. This is a, the performance is completely unacceptable. All the missed layups, the missed shots, not running the offense, it's just completely unacceptable, and, it, and it's not characteristic of how I want my team to play. Okay, Coach, we'll see you at the end of the game. Thank right, you. Thank you. Back to you. Th thank you, Fred. I, I, guys, I could not hear, we could not hear the interview, but I, I can read lips. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I saw, I saw yeah. she, she said terrible. <laughs> And, and the rest of it was all body language <laughs> and facial expressions. So I know the girls in the locker room are about to get an infield in about eight seconds from now. We didn't even need audio to figure out what she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and she just got a good look at the Huffman Viking cheerleaders, the award-winning Huffman Viking cheerleaders, who are perennial all-stars when it comes to winning cheerleading competitions. Where you here at Huffman High School on the eastern side of Birmingham, Alabama, Birmingham City Schools. I'm your host, Steve Brown, with my man, Michael Tart. This is your halftime, sponsored by AEA, the Alabama Education Association. They are a proud sponsor, and they are proud to support the Birmingham City Schools. AEA is committed to advancing the cause of public education, and they believe that every child deserves a quality education. AEA sincerely thanks all educators in attendance who are here cheering on their team. Enjoy the game and visit myaea.org to learn more. Have time here at Huffman High School. Mike, tell them about our, our three-point sponsor. Our three-point sponsor is by AFLAC, yeah. James W. Brown district sales coordinator. You can reach him at 205-945-1130. Or you can email him at j12 underscore brown at us.afflac.com. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, Halftime here at Huffman. And we're thankful to Afflac. We're thankful to AEA. And you know, we also have one of our first corporate sponsors. Now, you know, Afflac you know, it, it's an a international company, but, but this is James Brown. But we have Jax, our first full corporate sponsor, who sponsors our Scholar Athletes of the Week. It's all about the South, and kudos to our behind-the-scenes do-it-all lady, Nikki Seaborn, for pulling in Jax to be a part of our BCS Under the Light Courtside Edition sponsorship team. And we certainly look forward to keeping them on board as we roll back into football season next week. And they are next year, I should say. And they also are our sponsor of the player of the game, which we've added this year. And we look forward to having our player of the ladies game and a player of the game for the boys game, Michael. Jacks, all about, all the, about South. the South. Well, let's look at our BCS top five uh, that came up. Uh, let's go back to that if we can, uh, guys. Let's look at our BCS top five just as a little preview. Uh, we're going to get to see the number five Huffman Vikings in our second game of our doubleheader. Now, don't be deceived. 
The Vikings have a losing record right now, but they played up. Uh, all of our coaches in Birmingham, Michael, I think you would agree, play difficult schedules leading into region play so that their boys can be ready for difficult competition. I think it's a test. It's almost like college basketball. You play all those out of non-conference games to get your teams ready for season play or, or, or in this case, region play. So I think that Huffman will be ready for region play and it's just a tune up that the record doesn't reflect that right now, but the region record is what counts. Absolutely. Ramsey coming in at number four with a record of four and four right there on the Mendoza line, as we like to say in baseball. Uh, and, and, it, and it's up in the air which way they're going to go. Uh, Rams is not a, a star late team this year. Uh, they do have some potential stars, but we're going to have to see and we'll get to see later this week if they really have the star power when they take on the number three, Winona Dragon. Winona, a team that we saw last week and they stated we'll see them again later this week as they host Ramsey from Willie Hickey High Gymnasium. Number two, Carver High School, the Carver High School Rams. And number one, the Parker High School Thunder and Herd round out the BCS top five. Now that's as of week three. And certainly as we mentioned, you know, with this being a part of the season, when teams are playing up, uh, playing outside of the region, uh, we expect uh, that that pole to to be shaken up, move around a little bit as we walk through this season. And once they get into that region play, you'll see some things shift around week to week. You get to look at some of our outstanding fans doing their thing as 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 we get a little dancing going on here at. Mikey Gymnasium, everybody just relaxing, enjoying halftime, three minutes and 47 seconds to go before the ladies get back on the field. 23 to 14 is the score. The Lady Vikings with the lead, uh, but 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 it's not good enough right now. They, they could be playing better. They gave away a lot of baskets underneath the goal when, the, when uh, they were able to break the press. Uh, they, they still have not begun to cut off the sideline boundary when they're pressing. So, and, and they missed quite a number of easy shots underneath the basket. The one thing I can say, they're, they're getting the offensive rebounds, but like you said, they're, they're missing the baskets too. So it's turning into third shots and fourth shots. So if you're gonna get that offensive rebound, put it right back. Absolutely, you heard the buzzer calling the players out. The first, the first bell, as we like to say in basketball, the first warning, letting the guys uh, know that it's time to get back out. Let's look at our Scholar Athletes of the Week, sponsored by Jack. First one, Johanna Moore, 3.4 GPA. That's what we are talking about. Getting it done on the court, getting it done in the classroom. That is a combination of BCS excellence. And Kevin, Kevon Walker, that's the young man that I was thinking about yeah. in the pre-show. Oh, yeah, that's right. That really came out. He blossomed in the fourth quarter of that game against Pinson. The Scholar Athlete of the Week, Kevon Walker, with a 3.3 GPA, getting it done in the classroom, getting it done on the field. Jax, all about the South. Thank you, Jax, Scholar Athlete of the Week. We're enjoying the lovely confines of the Huffman High School Gymnasium. Nice video screen. On the screen now, you're seeing the Huffman High School Lady Vikings as they were moving. There's Coach Slater smiling, <laughs> doing, doing her side to side with the girls last year as they were making their way on their road to Legacy Arena. And our official halftime sponsors, Alabama Education Association. AEA, the Alabama Education Association, that's right. All right, as you look down at the floor, you see that the music is drawing them out. The <laughs> players are coming back now. They're going to have to save it until halftime between the boys' show. This is just a warm up, so they tell them to go ahead and get warm because at the halftime of the boys' game, we really going to get it down. 
but they are getting it going. Look at them, the cheerleaders getting their little part in on one end. We got faculty, we got parents on the other end. We got a referee out here. Yeah, man. got the ref <laughs> at half court. Everybody's feeling it. That's how we do it in the Birmingham City School. It's just a good vibe everywhere. Good times all around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> How about it? One more time. Yes, sir. 22 seconds before we get this thing back started with these ladies for the second half of the game. Get ready now for the Lady Vikings to return to the court. Coach Slater comes out with her team looking determined. That was a good warm-up, ladies, for for the halftime of the <laughs> boys game. So y'all come back and, and get it in. That's the way we do it, Michael. Book a beat in front of me. I, I learned that in salesman school. There you go. <laughs> Gaston will inbound the ball. The Titans. Uh, it's deflected and stolen, but stolen back. Much to rest by the Huffman Viking defense, making it difficult for the tight. Almost travel in the Almost. corner. Deflected, number 12 spins, but it's blocked and the foul is called on Kelsey. I don't know about that call. I, I thought that, that, that was either. a clean block. I hey. agree with you on that but one. But I'm, I'm not wearing a striped shirt, That's so right. it doesn't matter. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask uh, the concession stand operator what's going on with these uh, pina colada looking cups <laughs> down there. They got some, got some special going on around there at that concession stand, don't they? It's pretty good. I've seen a couple of people. Yeah, a little actually cups some gourmet, gourmet lemonade. I'm just joking. <laughs> But it certainly looks good. Gonna have to get us some. Both free throws sank. 23 to 16 is the score. We got a seven point game. Tight defense by the Titans. Deflected out of bounds. Titans are slowly stepping up their defense. Right. I'm sure the way they finished that second quarter gave them confidence. Penetration Jones. Nice. Nice. Floater. Yeah. T. Jones. T. Jones has 11 points leading the Vikings. Nice pass. 32 pump fake. Trying to find something. Kicks it out. No. It rims out. Jamiria. Oh, she thought about it and she doubled. Oh. She was about to try to give a, a, a outlet pass and they were covered. She second guessed herself on that one. Gaston is getting back, man. They they you can tell they feel confident. Around the horn they go. Three-pointer underway. No. Gaston had a lot of success with that three-pointer the first they half. Did. Really kept that margin down. They seemed to get clean open shots for the three. Really did. Jamaria penetrated dish and she missed the bunny. That is so painful when you miss the ones <laughs> under the goal, Michael. That's your gimmies. You, you, you can't miss the gimmies. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's easy shots. That's easy money. Coach Slater had to sit her down. You got to think about it. Get your mind right. Use the square. Use the square. There you go. Use the square. Jumper, no. Rebound, and another tie-up. I like the way number 12 gets that ball on the low post, and she's very nimble. The Huffman defense is just, just locking her down, and she can't do anything. <laughs> she can't do nothing with it. They've been on her all game. Huffman struggling to get a field goal. They've gotten one. They need more. 
Five minutes and 49 seconds, and they throw it away. Huffman is not playing good ball right now. And you, they've drawn a foul there at Gaston City. I believe Coach Slater will be getting a time out here pretty <laughs> soon if this does not change the trajectory that we're seeing. The GPC Gaston City getting a little pace going. They're getting that pace. They inbounds it under the goal. She's wide open in the corner, but Jamiria closes quickly. But she steps back and gives her the open three. Whoa. An Al Flag three. Whoa. She stepped back and gave her a James W. Brown district sales coordinator for Al Flag three. And you just can't give her that three like that. Can't you do can't it. give it to her. Can't do it. Now, that's a nice finish under the goal by Mathis. That's two. the way you respond. 27 to 19 is the score. Travel almost, no, he called a foul. Gaston will inbound as Robbins comes in for Mathis. Nice, no, not a nice pass. Too far, out of bounds. Off the ball. She had it. Just could get her the ball. Again, the purpose of that press is to make you make a mistake. T. Jones to the corner to Robbins. No, rebounded by Kelser. She pounds it hard and misses the shot. Goes and down to get it. Rebound. Yeah, fell a little awkwardly. I like a catch and shoot more than I like that catch, pound, and go up. She's on the floor writhing. I think she twisted her arm a bit. Coach Slater calls out the trainer. Actually, it appears to be the leg that is giving her some difficulties. Certainly prayers up for minimal complications for young Kelser as we are at the four minute and 54 minute and 45 second mark of the third quarter. The Huffman Lady Vikings with the 27 to 19 lead as Kelser gets up and is gingerly going off the court. Jada Kelser, the 5'9 senior as Gaston City brings it up quickly. Bounce pass and a Got to put the charge. Offensive foul. Out of control on that one. Tamiria Jones, tonight's leading scorer so far, brings it up. Mathis goes up strong but misses. Out of bounds. Huffman gets it underneath their goal. They're running the four square. Gets it inside to Jamiria Jones, oh. who got the inside position for two. I love it when teams get points out of the inbound under the goal. Timeout on the court. Four minutes and 20 seconds in the third quarter. The score is 29 to 19 here at Viking Gymnasium on the campus of Huffman High School. I'm Steve Brown with my man, Michael Tart. This is BCS Under the Lights, Courtside Edition. We'll be right back. Page Palace looks to encourage reading outside of the classroom and inside of our homes by at least 15 minutes, three days per week. Now, in order to help our young students succeed, we need total commitment across the board. That's parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, mentors, and so many more. So join us. Join us in sharing the love of reading with our kids. To learn more or to volunteer to read with our students, please visit behamufirst.org. That's behamufirst.org. Or at 205-320-0879. Listen, 
Thanks to all of you for being Page Pals. We're back to live action. Four minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 29 to 19 is the score. The Huffman Lady Vikings holding on, I might say, to a 10-point lead. Holding on. Holding on. Gaston City has been dangerous from behind the three-point arc. Huffman's press has been dangerous, but not yet lethal. Three-pointer by Robbins. No. Rebound. Titans stolen. Vikings. Thrown away by the Vikings. Saved by Robbins. And she traveled. Yes, she traveled. <laughs> <laughs> As someone yells, what? <laughs> Three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Titans bring it up. Nice ball fake, oh, but nice it's deflected. Deal. Nice anticipation. Retrieved. And we got a foul called on the Vikings. Those fouls could add up as we get down to the fourth quarter. Gaston City brings it up. Passes it over to zero. She thought about the three. Deflected by Jones. Stolen. And, and she has to foul her to keep her from a breakaway layup. This going to be an easy two right there. Vikings get it in quickly. Tamiria Jones. High post to Jamiria Jones. Pass down low to number four. Who turns? Misses, but gets her own rebound. Taps it out to Tamiria. Tamiria between the legs, drive, jump step, oh, sweet. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you work it. Tamiria Jones is having a night. Huffman is trapping. Gaston is breaking it down low. Nice pump fake, two points. They're getting it in. They're passing. They're beating the press beating with the, the pass. Press. Tamiria Jones, four on the drive, no. She gets her own rebound, but it's taken away by Gaston City. We got a 10-point game, 31-31. Gaston City deflected, Jamiria pushing it on up the court, contact, and she draws the foul. To the line for two shots, Jamiria Jones. She has only seven points on the night. Her sister has really been doing the lion's share of the scoring for the Vikings. She misses the first. And she misses them both. But it's out of bounds off of Gaston City. So the Vikings will inbound the ball underneath their goal with two minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the third. Jamiria Jones, yes, two points. Something about taking a shot after the, the pass in, man. Number 12 anticipates nice pass over the top. Four goes hard, dishes it to 32, who is fouled. 32 finds herself always in a good position on that low post, doesn't she? At least tonight she's been. Tonight she has. She, yeah. she has to make the shots, though. That's the one thing. But she'll go to the free throw line yeah. again. Oh, yeah. This is a third trip to the line. She makes the first one. She has racked up seven points for the Titans. 33 to 22 is the score. Vikings still with the lead. And she makes them both. Now Gaston City implements the press and Huffman throws it away. Little pressure by Gaston City. 
That may be a little foreshadowing <laughs> of what's to come. Two minutes and nine seconds remaining. A 10-point deficit for Gaston City, trying to dent it right here. Cross-court pass, down into 32, but it's deflected by Jones. Mathis gets it, throws it away. Drive. She goes up on Jones. No, she fakes it. Penetration out to the wing. Penetration out to the wing. She measures it. No. Rebound. Tight. Tie up. Oh. Off of fall. Off of fall. A little contact. Minute 30 seconds remaining in the third. 33-23 is the score. We got a timeout. Gaston City. One minute, 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You're watching BCS Under the Lights Courtside Hoops Edition, a production of BCS Media and Birmingham City Schools. Birmingham City Schools, success starts here. All right, we're back. We're getting ready, Michael. Minute 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Gaston City is trying to stay in it. They're not going away. Yeah, they're not, man. They're not backing down. Not backing down at all. Side out. Looking for gaps in that Huffman defense. There aren't many. Pump fake. Nice triple that position she started from. Nice ball fake. Vikings are just aggressive. Missed shot, a tie up. Possession goes to Huffman. Gaston City in their 2 2 1 press. The Vikings get it in to Jamiria back. To Jamiria, moving the ball well. Robbins was fouled, trying to get in there for the layup. Some great ball, ball movement on that. 54.7 seconds in the third quarter. Brianna Robbins to the free throw line for two shots for the Lady Vikings. She makes the first. Bit of a knuckleballer there. Did you <laughs> notice that? It almost just floated in there. Didn't move. Really did. No rotation on the spin. And she misses the second. And it goes out of bounds. Gaston City will take possession. 53.2 seconds. 34-23 is the score. You kind of feel like the, the, the score should be, you know, much greater margin. It and really should in Huffman's favor. The defense, though, is making the difference for Huffman. Three-pointer lunch, no. Out of bounds, Huffman ball, 31.5 seconds in the third. Gaston in their 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. Trapping Jamiria. She's looking to dribble it up. She gets it across. She gets to the free throw line. Stop, pop, misses, gets her own rebound. Back to left hand, misses. Rebound, Robbins makes the two-point shot. The score, 36 to 23, 10 seconds remaining in the third. 
Gaston looking for something. Two seconds. And time runs out. Great defense by Gaston City. That makes the score 36 to 23. And it's fourth quarter time, Mike. I still feel like Huffman's going to run away with it. I'm just waiting on it. Yeah, you have the feeling that it, <laughs> it just, they're one blow away, <laughs> one knockout punch, maybe a combination. Maybe not one punch, but a good combination and putting them down. Get them with a one two combo. But whereas uh, Gaston City is, is a combo from being back in this thing. <laughs> That's true. Because they're not getting, they're not giving up. They're staying in. They're playing some D too. But all right, let's do a station ID while we got a minute. Because when we get back, I got a feeling we don't want to break from the action. Scholar Athletes of the Week, sponsored by. All right, we're back here at Viking Gymnasium, Huffman High School, Birmingham City Schools, ready for the fourth quarter. Lady Vikings with a 13-point lead. Only eight minutes left. Largest lead of the night, actually. Yeah, it is. But yet, Gaston City still has hope. The threes have been falling. They started pressuring here of late. Let's see what happens. Huffman is aggressive. They've extended that defense. Huffman making them use a lot of that clock, <laughs> a man. A lot of it. That D is working them. That's right. It is working. The girls down low are battling for position. Kelser getting physical down there with 32. They're trying to see who's going to own that low post. And nobody's giving it up easily. They're taking a minute off the clock. Wow. <laughs> the coach is trying to dial something up here. Down to six minutes and 47 seconds. Huffman is having none of it. Tie up. Huffman's ball. Wow. What, what a great minute and <laughs> what, 15 <laughs> seconds of defense. Substitution for the Vikings. Vikings with a 13 point lead. Still not a comfortable 13 point lead though. Tipped away, gotten back though. Oh, blocked by the Titans. Six minutes and 26 seconds. Huffman inbounding under their goal. Under the goal to Jones. And one. Jamiria Jones with an and one. You, you said the inbound pass and score is the best. Absolutely, man. You need to you need to maximize that. One, you know, I judge your, your coaching strategy if you can draw up a play. You should be able to draw up something there that works. You really should. And I the coach Slater is one of those top notch coaches. Because in most cases you're gonna catch somebody sleeping. That's right. If you design it right, you really can. And she converts. Jones with 12 points now has eclipsed the 11 of her sister. Oh, she they got, got steal steal. though. Tamiria is going all the way. She shoots it too hard. Robbins rebound, misses it. Jamiria ties it up to clean it up. Ball goes to Gaston City. Their hands just haven't been that soft around the, oh, the, the rim oh no. this week. You said hit that square. Got to hit that square. Six minutes remaining in this game. 
the first of our doubleheader for tonight. Penetration, kicks it out to 32, no. Nice rebound by number one, but she loses it. Oh, oh nice the move. Nice. Dribbling with the head down, she kind of dribbled into <laughs> that. But she made a quick move. She was focused on that behind the back right there. Side out for the Vikings. 545 remaining in the game. Oh, and one. Leon Jones, and one. You can see this Gadsden City team getting tired. They're only playing with at least eight, nine players, so that rotation is not very heavy, and you can just see it all over their faces Absolutely. right now. Absolutely, they are faltering at this point. As we have a timeout, Gadsden City got a full timeout at, right on cue with your observation, trying to give them a little rest. Here down the stretch, Four, five minutes and 40 seconds in the game. 39 to 23 is the score. A 16 point lead for the Lady Vikings. Another, another ugly win for them. Uh, Coach Slater with a lot on her clipboard to go over. Not that the team is playing bad, they're just not playing as good as they can with the talent they have. Not the way that she wants them to play. Absolutely. We're here at Huffman High School. The Viking Gymnasium. This is the first of our doubleheader. Huffman Vikings playing host to the Gaston City Titans. We love BCS Media, is what the banner says that you're looking at on top of the bleachers. And we're thankful to the Huffman High cheerleaders, the pep squad, and all those who have made us feel right at home here at Huffman High School. Now to the line for the N1, Jamiria Jones. And she makes it. Gaston brings it up, down by 19. Their offense has been limited to side to side. Anytime they go down in there, that's what happens for the most part. Showtime. Tamiria, oh, nice scoop. <laughs> and one, Tamiria Jones. The Twins battling for tonight's lead score. Kind of get that sense that Huffman is slowly, slowly pulling away. 15 for Tamiria, now 16. Good defense again. Samaria, and it's deflected out of bounds this time. Five minutes and seven seconds remaining in this game. The first of our doubleheader. Nice drop inside in the lane, kick out to Mathis, no. She wanted a foul. Huffman retains possession, though. Stack it up at the free throw line, they do. As she throws <laughs> it off the unsuspecting <laughs> Titan. We just talked about that. Wow. <laughs> we just talked about nice that. Nice heads up play <laughs> by Tamiria Jones. She got caught sleeping, had her back to the out of bounds line. Absolutely, and she was able to throw it off of her back, got it back, and drew the foul. Tamiria working it tonight. She makes the first. 4.59 remaining in this contest. 
She misses the second. Tough rebound there by Gaston. Huffman backs the pressure off. Gaston pushes it up. But Huffman is just as intense in the half court, though. They're not giving up anything. Scrap. And we got a tie-up. Nice scrappy tie-up. Four minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the game. Possession goes to Huffman. Mary Jones brings it up. Inside to Jamiria. Stop and pop, no. She gets the rebound, she goes back up, no. Gaston with the rebound. Gaston pushing it. Huffman meeting him beyond the three-point line. Into the corner, three-pointer, no. Nice rebound and put back, no but she misses. Stepped out, did she? And Gaston will retain possession. Four minutes and eight seconds remaining in the game. 46-23 is the score. Three-pointer by Gaston, no. Rebound, Gaston. Put back, kicked it out. Three launch, on line, and it's good. An Aflac three-pointer. Sponsored by Jane W. Brown. Jamiria, Tamiria brings it up. And Jamiria saves the errant pass, gets it out to Tamiria. 341 remaining in the game. Inside to Jones. High low to Kelser. Outside. Nothing there. She's trying to drive baseline and draws a foul. Oh. Three minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the game. Two shots for the Vikings. And she makes the first. And she makes the second. Nice hesitation. She penetrates, dishes it back to the top of the key, into the corner, back up top. The Huffman defense is there, and Matthew steals it. She goes all the way and misses the layup. Put back, it's missed. And Gaston gets the rebound. Corner three is deflected, and she oh. hits it. Another out flag, three-pointer. That young lady has four three-pointers on the night. Two minutes and 34 seconds. Too late to help her team, it's though. Too late. It's too late. But she has had an outstanding performance beyond that arc. She and 32 have been a two-girl record crew for the Titans. Stolen by oh. number four. She's going up. She needs to set something up. Didn't take a bad shot. Commendable. Over to number zero. Oh, the other shot. He got another three. Got another three. Four, three. Another half flag three pointer. Sheffield. Her second three of the night. They're not giving up. They're they are giving not up. giving up as we're at two minutes and three seconds remaining in this game. Inside. Outside, Mathis, no. Rebound, Gaston. Huffman is playing quite freely here. Almost deflected and she fouled her. Minute and 43 remaining. 
Robbins back into the game for Mathis. Gaston City with the side inbound. Attempted penetration. Pump fake on the wing, and she stepped out of bounds. No, called a foul. So Gaston City will inbound underneath their goal. No look to the corner. Mary Jones is there on her. The top is covered. Long three, no. The only one she's missed, she's been a step or two out of her zone, out of her range. That was a deep three she just shot too. Tamiria loses control. Minute 13 seconds remaining in the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gaston City with a minute to get more points. Deflected. They're struggling just to get it past the arc. They're stolen. Jamiria all the way. Two points. Nice payoff. 40 seconds. Stolen. And she draws a foul. 29.2 seconds remaining in the game. The Huffman Lady Vikings putting a, 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 a cap on this one. Apparently 50 to 32. They they got that combo, Michael. They did. They got they that did. combo, and, <laughs> and they got them wobbly, and they went on and knocked them out in the fourth quarter. They started off real strong in that first quarter, kind of danced around in the second quarter. But that fourth quarter, yeah, that, that, that combo really came in handy for them. They stayed, they stayed persistent, and they wore them down. They wore them down. She makes her free throws, 52 to 32. 20 point lead with 27 seconds remaining. Scrappy defense remains the case for the Vikings. Kick out, long three, no. Vikings with it with 10 seconds, kick it out to Tamiria, loses it. Drive, and that's the game. 52-32 is your final score. The Huffman Lady Vikings defend home court and defeat the Gaston City Lady Titans. 52-32, Michael. What an outstanding performance by the Lady Vikings. They won ugly. They fought for three quarters, and they got here to the fourth, and they really stretched it out. They really did, man. I mean... Gadsden City is playing eight players, man. Huffman's pretty deep. That's a deep team, so I don't see how you can be that physical and go keep going to hang with them and, and just work your way through that without getting tired. And Huffman ran them to death with their defense. They made them work, that's and right. they tired them out. So that's why you have this 20-point victory tonight. Right. Smart approach by Coach Slater. Uh, definitely outman. Uh, Skill-wise, and with the number of players, and with that pressure defense of Huffman, uh, Gaston City just couldn't do much. Coach Slater, I hope is pleased. She, again, <laughs> they always have something to work on. I mean, that's just the nature. <coughs> Excuse me, of being a good squad. But we're going to go down to Fred in just a minute, and he's going to talk to Co Coach Slater and uh, Michael. Player of the game. Jackson's our player of the game sponsor. Uh, who are you voting for for player of the game? <laughs> Let's see. We need Brett to break the tie. I'm going to go with the twin sisters. I think they both should get it. Wow. Well, let's <laughs> go down to Fred, and we'll talk about our player of the game when we get back. Fred? Room, uh, at halftime for them to come back out and, and win this game. Well, honestly, I had to let them have it. You know, I had to be raw and real and just let them know that 
the performance was just completely unacceptable, um, that they needed to pick it up. Um, and, and we did a little bit. We still missed too many shots, um, but we'll address that at practice tomorrow. Who do you have up next, Coach? Um, on Wednesday, we have Paul Bryant coming in, so hopefully we'll play better as far as making layups and being just consistent offensively. Okay. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, the Lady Vikings are going to get ready for Paul Bryant. Um, we're going to go back to Fred as he interviews Tamiria Jones. Tamiria finished tonight with 15 points. Take it away, Fred. All right, we are live here with one of my favorite twins, Tamiria Jones. Talk about the performance of this game. Coach wasn't pleased at halftime. What did she tell you all for you all to come back out and win this game? Uh, we really had to pick up the energy. We had to make the easy shots this game and bring our offense effectively. So. What will you all have to do in practice to get ready for Paul Bryant? Uh, just run our offense effectively and uh, give effort. Just practice hard. Give effort. Okay, all right. So go, you know, wipe the sweat and get ready for uh, practice tomorrow. Take, get some rest, okay? Thanks. All right, back to you, Tart and uh, Steve. Well, here we go. We're, we're back. Uh, Michael, again, your vote for player of the game. Twins. You go I, with the twins. I think, they, I think they both should get it because they balled out tonight. Now, Tamiria <laughs> had 16 points. Jamiria had 17 points. Uh, my vote is for Jamiria. So, so let's <laughs> let Fred, let's let our, our Brett break the tie for us. Brett? My vote is for uh, Fred Davenport. That's who I'm going <laughs> to vote for. Uh, let's split between the day. I'm going to give half of my, the first half of my vote to, to, to one of the twins and the other two other ones. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, they so both just like do an outstanding twins. job. Hey, I'm Absolutely. trying to be a politician Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not bad being outvoted two to one. As we said, Jamiria, 17 points. Tamiria, 16 points. Outstanding performance by the Jones girls to take their team to victory. And they are our players of the game. Tamiria and Jamiria Jones, the Jacks player of the game. It's all about the South. Michael Tart, thank you, man. No, I what a great you, job uh, tonight. Enjoy it here rolling with you, man. Uh, the multi-talented Michael <laughs> Tart from behind the camera to in front of the camera doing a stellar job on both sides. Hey, appreciate man, I appreciate partner. that, man. I'm going to go back to the bench now. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you, Michael. Yeah. As we get ready for the second half of our doubleheader, the men's game, the boys, Huffman Vikings against the Gaston those and we'll be right back and get you ready for the second game. <laughs> You're getting a look at the Gaston City Titans warming up there. Travel down Interstate 59. Oh, about an hour drive, probably on the bus. Nice little cruise to get here for the nice game. Gadsden, that's a, that, that is a nice little ride for him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, about yeah. an hour. About an hour away, but you know, these guys are ready to play some ball. They're, you know, I don't want to make it sound like they're, they're bumpkins or anything, but they're in the big city ready tonight to play that's right. on Tuesday night, on um, Monday night basketball. So, Absolutely, and uh, they they come in as a as a team with a winning record. Uh, they're going to be a challenge to, to Huffman because they have confidence in themselves. Uh, Huffman, as we know, has played a difficult schedule, and uh, they they come in with only three victories at this this point of the season, as opposed to seven losses. But 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 don't be don't judge them on their early oh, season. Oh no record, doubt, right? no doubt. Look. I got a chance right before the game started to talk with uh, uh, Coach 
uh, over there, you know, Coach Ward, uh -huh. hit what he is doing. He has got one of the toughest schedules here in the state of Alabama. So he's playing top tier teams. He has a bunch of guys that are new. Now, what he's doing like last week, they won an overtime against uh, uh, Spain Park. Tough in, with, with no time left on the, on the clock. So they went to the line and they won that game. So now you're looking at who he's playing. You're looking at his schedule. But what Coach Ward is actually doing is getting ready for the playoffs. All he has to do is win his area. That's right. And I think everybody gets caught up, like he was saying, is they get caught up in the numbers right now. But all you have to do to go to the state is win your area. Right. And that's what he's doing right now is getting his guys used to seeing the top-tier teams, how they're playing aggressively. They're seeing ball handlers. They're seeing inside players. They're seeing guys that can shoot from outside. They're seeing teams that are very organized in their attack and in their defense. And there's, there, these guys are top, top teams in the state. So he's getting them ready with this schedule to play uh, area, area basketball to get ready for the state tournament. That's a great analysis, uh, Brett, outstanding analysis. And, and we've seen that formula bowl well in the past. Yeah. And, and, and we certainly expect it to turn out the same way for Huffman this year. As you see, the coaches at the scorer's table getting instructions from the officials. Both teams continue to warm up. Let's, let's get ready for, for our introduction of the players, the, the lineup uh, for the Huffman Vikings. We, we don't just go through the starters. We go through them all. There you go. Highlighting BCS excellence. So, guys in the truck, when you're ready, let's roll our player profiles. Paul Reese, Paul point Reese. guard, junior. Number zero, point guard. Justin Nelson, Number point one, guard, Justin Nelson. Peyton Wiggins, combo guard. Peyton Wiggins. Jordan Collins, two guard, senior. Well, it looks like they're going to be Gibson. announcing him here. Two guard, Absolutely. junior. So Jaylen let's see Hulsen, what they're going to do with that. Guard, if the guys in the truck will uh, agree with us. Guard, that they're going to go ahead and make the announcements here. Kevin Walker, forward. Keith, Javon guard, Walker had a great senior. game last week. Caleb Came Carson, out in the fourth quarter. Senior. Jaden Burton. All right, we're back here at the stadium. You yeah. just saw Principal Jerome Wiggins Jr. pass by our table. Uh, great friend of the show, professional friend, family friend, and uh, we're getting ready to play some ball. Minute, 15 seconds. Let's go down to Fred with our head coach, Coach Steve Ward. All right, so we are live here with the head boys basketball coach, Steve Ward. Coach, they just played the song called Set It Off. Are you all ready to set it off? Yeah, we're ready to roll. Uh, just blessed and thankful to have another opportunity to play the game. Uh, the guys locked in, ready to go, so ready to jump it up. And, Coach, we know you all just came back from Tuscaloosa playing Paul Bryant. You had to get right back into practice to get ready for this game. If you can tell the audience what you all had to work on to make improvements to be ready for tonight. Well, the biggest thing is with our youth, our youth you know, we're just trying to learn how to play to our standards. So tonight we want to make sure we play to our standards. So you'll, you'll see it, hopefully. All right, Coach, when your players are back over here, I'll let you go and, and bring them, and we'll catch you at halftime. Nice luck. All right, back to you, Steve and Brent. All right, partner, here we are. Here we are. Huffman is over there getting hyped, got the bouncing thing going up and down. They are doing their thing like, like the football team with Coach O before the game. There you go. They look like they've got energy on both sides of the court. Right, right. Yeah, this is what we're talking about, varsity boys basketball on Monday night. Yes, sir. Here we are on BCS. Under gonna... the lights, court side edition. There you go. Steve, it looks like you're ready to go back I'm, out there. I'm, I'm hyped, ready. man. I'm hyped. Tight, yes, tighten them shoes up, man. Go ahead out there. I want to <laughs> see you go ahead and dunk it. I have to give it up to Steve Brown the third for that rim action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the stadium announcer is going to go through the starters right here. We have a real hype atmosphere here at Huffman High School. Real hype atmosphere. No doubt. We look forward to halftime and our dance off. 
our line dance a thon. Titans with a lot of 6-2, six, 6-1 six, guys. I expect them to be scrappy. They look to be built more uh, heavier guys. I wonder if these guys also play football yeah, as well. Yeah, they also so, play yeah. guys. Nice game. Love how he handles. Handled the pressure last week against Spring Park and was one who iced the game at the line with no time on the clock. You like, you like and that. And it was in an overtime. You like that, don't you? There you go. Love it. Nerves of steel. Love to see him go ahead. Ice through the veins. All right. Like I said, like said we got a mid-size. Gaston team in the black uniform, red, or maybe that's a little little crimson and white trim with a G on the chest, a G on the left side panel. And your Vikings are in white with orange, trimmed in green. And they control the tip. Vikings clearly with the height advantage here. Yeah, uh, you can see that, particularly in the guard positions, you can see that they're they are mainly, they're physically way taller and bigger than the Gadsden guard. But as you said, though, these uh, Gadsden boys, they look a little footballish, and we see Walker with an and one to get them started using that height. There you go. That's how you get it down. You know, if you're going to have that kind of height advantage, you've got to use it. And that was smart. Get it to the big guy. Let him get it in there. He's either going to get the, the play or they're going to foul. Him. So Kevon now you're three points. And he swishes it. Huffman starts out in the full court pressure. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. I'm sorry, 2-1 two, two, full court zone. Gaston gets it over, gets it to the middle. Oh, he almost oh. traveled there. Three-pointer launch, and it's good. An Aflac three-pointer by number 22. Jacoby Sharp. James Curry Brown, district sales coordinator. Huffman brings it up. Inside pass to the big man. Now he goes up with the left hand. Wow, did you see how he felt comfortable? How he went to from the bounce went with the left and spun? Kendrick Berry. Yep. Number zero wraps that one away and goes to the rack, but it's blocked by Walker. The Huffman height is starting off with his presence being felt. Yes, yes. Walker, just, he didn't even jump. Swatted it, he did. Jump shot, no. Rebound. Vikings, off and running. Ryan Gibson brings it up over to Wiggins on the wing, inside to Walker. Nice inside pass, and a better pass over to Mosley, who powers it up. And this out of bounds off of the, was it off the side of the bottom of the back? I court? couldn't tell. I couldn't tell what the call was. Five to three is the score. The Vikings in the two to one. 
Dangerous pass. He gets it through. Bounce pass. Drive by zero, and it's blocked again. His first two attempts have been rejected. Oh, pick. And it's taken away by Gaston. Awkward shot. Great defense by Wiggins. Gibson gets it up on the outlet. Blocked by Gaston. And they throw it off him, but Mosley, no. Gaston gets it. Health to Skelter here. And a timeout by Coach Wood. Now, Jacoby Sharp for Gaston, he looks like he is a player. He's been involved in most of the defensive plays and definitely has been the one who's been producing the offense for Gadsden. So he's the one for Gadsden I think we need to keep an eye out on. Five to three is the score. Five minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Timeout at Huffman High School. Now, you said something about them playing a little uh, helter-skelter uh, Huffman at this point. Well, you think they're just kind of riled up, or are you going to let them run and, and get it out of their system right now? Well, it, you know, it seemed to me that both teams, just in that last sequence, they were just throwing it and running and throwing and making turnovers. So let's see which team settle down first. Uh -huh. And I believe that one, that team will get a lead. Gibson up top. Working it. Gets the Wiggins down low. Wiggins gets contact. Mosley gets fouled. He can call the contact on Mosley. Mosley headed to the line. He was in good position down there. I think he needs to be prepared that he's going to get hit. Yeah. He's got the size to go through the contact. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I want these guys to do, start playing through the contact and finishing the play. Nice left-handed shot by Mosley. I'm sorry, that's Barry. Kendrick Barry. Barry with the left-handed shot. Huffman picks up full court. Wiggins working, reaching, getting a little contact there with the body. Getting away with it. He five gets around and that tip oh. drops away. No, they call him there for a charge. There it is, charge on him. Nice position. He got nice position, forced him. Wiggins harassed him all the way with that dribble and yeah. forced him to charge. Wiggins defense forced him into a bad decision right there. Now the Gaston City Tigers pick up, Titans pick up in full court pressure. The Vikings methodically attacking it. Looking down at Barry. Barry back to Wiggins. Wiggins out to the wing. Tries to get it inside the walker and it deflected. Number one has been shooting that little skip pass. Trying to scoot that thing on a bounce. That's the second time he's tried that. Yeah, Matthew uh, look. Lucas. Wiggins to the free throw line. I want to see what happens when Huffman looks like they slow down and get into their rhythm. They haven't quite gotten into their rhythm as of yet. Correct. He makes the first one. And he makes a vote. I just like his touch. I, like, I just like how Wiggins goes through his motion. Nine to three is our score. As the Titans bring it up. Thirty-two gets it at the top of the key. Drives hard, spins, goes up strong. Gets his own rebound after the miss. Walker rejects the putback. Wiggins, oh, oh sweet. behind the back, oh, oh. oh. Looks like we have, oh, oh I thought that was a foul block. On Wiggins. Oh, I would have to look at that one again, because I think that was a block. I thought Wiggins I thought, was headed to I the outside. The and guy was moving too, Brett. Yeah, yeah. I thought the defender was sliding his feet. Nine to three, the score remains. Four minutes and 37 seconds in the first quarter. Gaston City, again, a tough team. Built like football players. Yes, they play rugged. Yes, sir. 
penetration. He cuffs it. Nice drive. Oh, he's confident. There you go. Yeah, that was a nice drive by the Jaco young fella. Jacoby Sharp, sophomore. Wiggins is wide open. He thinks better. Gives it to Gibson. No. Rebound Walker, even though he's pushed. They boxed him out, and they called the over or back for him. On him, I should say. Walker being a little demonstrative, wanted to yep. get that ball. Yeah, he did. He wants to get, he looked like he was telling one of his players who had the ball, get it to him a little higher on the inside. He's got the height advantage. Right. Use it. That way he can keep it up high. Yeah. Gaston pushes it up. Four point game here. The defense of the Vikings is very aggressive. Passed it back to the corner. The little man on the scoop. They're not afraid to go he inside. Gets the rebound. He passes it out. Nice pump fake. Moving it around the horn. Three pointer from the corner. Bam. Whoa. And that flag. Three pointer by. James McFadden. McFadden. Our flag, three-pointer. 9-8 is our score. Three-pointer lunch. Oh, by right back at you. Jordan Collins for three. And our flag, three for the Vikings. Pump fake. Pump fake, spin. Deflected by Wiggins. There you go. Nice defense of getting your hands up when you see the ball going around like that, man. But that was a nice three-pointer. Yeah, it was. Put up by our man, Collins. Stolen by Wiggins. Nice left-handed finish by Justin Nelson. Nice. Did you see the way Nelson, uh, he was going to go play through that, that contact? He saw, he knew he was going to get hit. That's how the rest of the team has got to play, to play through that contact and finish. Into the lane, he spins, he goes up strong. A little chatter on the court between the guys. Just have it. You know, yeah, we'd love to see that three again. You know, you see the guys out there, they're just chatting. Look how deep he is on there. Boom. He shot that with confidence. Beautiful. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Oh, yeah, they're just talking about, you know, how was homework? Absolutely. How was your how was geometry how was class today? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you did well in finals coming up. And he makes the first. Sharp has been there. Their offensive threat for Gadsden tonight. He's a confident player. He has six points so far. Six of the nine. Seven of the ten. by Collins. He found a crease. He lets it go. Didn't get to set his feet that time. No, I didn't think that was a good setup shot for him to take that three. Blocked by Walker. Oh! Paul Reese took the punishment, drawing the foul, but they didn't call it, and Walker just cleaned it up. Yeah, he did. Walker stood stood right there, made the pivot, and as soon as he tried to go up, here it goes. Now right the, here. Now the boom, talking get is out led to a technical. 32 for the Titans. Was just teed up with some of his extra verbiage, Brett. Yeah, you got you know, you gotta you know, you like the uh the competitiveness, but you gotta 
to go ahead and settle this down because that can get out of hand. So Wiggins will shoot the technicals for the Vikings. He misses it. 14 to 10 is the score. One minute and 49 seconds remain in the first quarter. And he makes the second. Gaston City coach is telling number 32 to shut up now as he continued to jaw over there. <clears throat> yeah, he needs to stop chin wagging and play the game. That's right. <clears throat> You don't win, you don't win it with, you don't win it with, with quips. Chin. Collins penetrates for two. Collins. Nice drive, nice touch. And a nice comeback. Quick turnaround for the Gaston Titans. You can see, as soon as you score, Gat, Gadsden is going to come right back up the floor so you don't have time to celebrate. Wiggins for three. And Affleck, three-pointer. Peyton Wiggins. Oh, he caught him on the leg. Got a foul back here. Caught him with it. But you see, it looks like Huffman's defense is starting to get aggressive. Turned They're starting to yes. turn it off. They're going to come at the, the ball handler. He's going to have to start making some decisions out here, good or bad, but the, the aggressive defense is going to make him make a play. You can <laughs> Substitution for the Vikings. 56.6 seconds remaining in the first. Gaston moving the ball, look down low. He penetrates, he weaves, he shoots. No. Rebounded, though, by Gaston. Goes back up and blocks and draws the foul. Foul on number 33, Kendrick Berry. There he goes, headed to the line. There you go, Trey uh, Williams headed to the line. What I will say about Gaston, they're feisty bunch of dudes. They are, man. They are. So they're not backing down from anybody. Right. This kind of team is always dangerous yeah. in high school basketball because they're scrappy, they're tough, and, and they're and they're physical. Yeah, yeah. So they may not they not may not have the height, but they do have the skills. Because 22 is a they good do. skill player. 15 has shown us some good yeah. skills. Yeah, yes he has. 32 is skilled around the low post. Yeah, and they're not they are not scared of contact, and they will go down in the paint. 32 also has a nice, nice form there as he sinks his free throws. The Vikings on the attack now. They're weaving it around the horn, Brett. Looking for a last shot here. Who do you think is going to get that shot, Wiggins? You got plenty of options out there, man. You got Collins who's gonna let one go. Obviously, Wiggins can penetrate and do what he wants. You can also penetrate to, to Walker. Jumper, Collins, no. Rebounded by Gaston. They've got some time. He throws it up with one hand. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. He came close to it, didn't he? He sure did. Wow, sure strong did. kid. He's a, he's a big kid. I like that dude sharp. I, I, I like the way he plays. He's aggressive about it. This guy, uh, he's not scared to put it up. So, you know, there, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a good, good continuance of this game as we're now at the end of the first quarter. Scores 20 to 13. Huffman with a seven-point lead against a scrappy. Gas the city tight. Let's take an ID and we'll be right back. You're watching BCS Under the Lights, courtside edition. Go, girl. Yeah, they are some tumblers, man. Beautiful I am tumbling, yes. They're doing such a great job with this the uh, cheerleading programs throughout the city of Birmingham at these schools. You That's see right. 
the annual cheer competition has really turned up the level yeah. of competition between schools. Uh, they engage middle school and uh -huh. elementary divisions. Uh, so yeah, it has really gone a long way towards building uh, cheerleading across the board. The G-Men getting ready to put it in play. Gaston City's version of the G-Man, Brett. There you go. I just want you to clean that up. Absolutely. You know I'm going <laughs> to do you right now. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do the, 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 the men from Grambling just right. As we're back to live action here. Bam! Sharp. Another Aflac three-pointer. What's that boy's name, Brett? Sharp. That guy is Jacoby Sharp. He is sharp. He's a sharp shooter, I and tell you that. Black three pointer. Twenty to sixteen is the score. Gibson with it up top. Over to Wiggins, and it's deflected. Bad pass. Collins getting ready to come back in the game. Deflected by the sophomore uh, Keyshawn Curry by Gadsden. Gibson takes a break. Collins comes you back in. Nelson, a little penetration to Wiggins. Back to Nelson. Back to Wiggins. Gaston City being physical. Wiggins pulls up a three and he misses. Gaston pushing it up. Baseline penetration. Stop the little man, but he gets it out top. Into the corner, he drives baseline, he bounce passes. Broken up, good hands. Yeah, number six has had about three turnovers for Gaston City. Nelson misses it, oh! Walker tried to put it back, and he was hit in the air. So the foul here, it stays here with the Vikings. He was soaring. Soaring he was. Gaston City coach has got his head, hands crossed. He's looking confused on the call. They're talking it over Yeah, right once now. you go airborne, I mean, you can't touch that guy. He was airborne. Yeah, two shots. Javon Walker had not done much scoring tonight, but he has been an eraser under the goal. Swish, he makes the first. Walker, nice form at the line. Gaston City coaches still Expressing consternation over that last call. He certainly is. And he makes them both. Five points so far for Walker on the night. Number 32 is quite nimble for he a man is his for size. He is for a big size. I was just thinking the same thing. Here we go. Balls in the sharp over there, passing it Cross out. Cross court pass. Little shake and bake. Man open for three. No, air ball, but big rebound. And one. Sharp. Picks it up and is hit. Takes it up. Yep. He's a player. He's a player, Brett. You're right. He's a good player. Let's see that one again, guys. Well, he's going to get a free throw here. Deep in there. Tough rebound. That. And he goes up tough. And he makes his free throw. <laughs> Six minutes and one second remaining before halftime. Huffman, 22. Gaston City, 19. Gaston is hanging in there with the with the Vikings. Brett, we're going to have to send somebody that concession stand. I'm seeing somebody with banana pudding. Uh-oh. Now they're in I, trouble now. I saw Gourmet Lemonade and doing the girls game. 
<laughs> we got to see what's going on. There we go. Had a turnover by the Vikings on a bad pass. Gaston will inbound it here. Sizing up Nelson. Gibson comes up the double team. Gaston working that wing over there. Bounce pass stolen by Walker and stolen back by Gaston. Now Gaston with the advantage. Stutter step, hesitate. He's in there with the trees. 15 gets it. See, they're physical. One point ball game, five minutes and four seconds before half. Wiggins on the drive, underneath the goal, out to Nelson, pump fakes after he stops, yes. Two points. Nice job, nice dish the way that Wiggins got it to Nelson under that basket. Gaston bringing it up. Jumper misses, rebounded Vikings. Gatson's not, not, they're not shy to take that three-pointer. Wiggins at the top, looking for a good shot. Huffman slowing it down. Walker trying to post up. Outside to Walker, Wiggins goes through. Gibson up top to Wiggins in the corner on the baseline. He dribbles through, it's deflected by Gaston City. They put their hands. Time out on the court. We'll go down to Fred and let Fred do a quick interview during this time out. Fred, take it away. All right, so we are live here with the senior. Tell us who you are. My name is Anija. Okay, Anija, Anija. So tell me about uh, cheering and what you enjoy about it. I enjoy the leadership of cheering and most of the attention that we get. <laughs> And you already, from what you told me, you already have your plan set for after high school. Where are you going? I'm going to Montevallo. <laughs> Do you plan to cheer there? I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> so tell me, you know, why Montevallo? I'm going to Montevallo because it's a liberal arts school and I wish to be an actress. <laughs> and so cheering is, is helping you, especially with those expressions, correct? Yes, of course, of course. The acting and to put on that persona, I love it. <laughs> okay. And my last question, what is the sisterhood like amongst uh, you and the... Uh, your, your team here? It's very special. I can come to them about anything, you know, whenever I'm having a bad day or whenever I just need to laugh, I can come to them, regardless of what it is. Okay. All right. Well, go cheer and we'll see you later, okay? Okay. All right, Brett, Steve, back to you all. Thank you, Fred, for that outstanding interview with that outstanding young lady representing BCS. Excellent. Hey, man, somebody that truck sent Nikki to the concession stand. Yeah. <laughs> they got gourmet lemonade. Like, I see banana oh. pudding. Man, I need to see that menu that they have down there, guys. Hey, man, they are getting down over here at Huffman. All right. Peyton Wiggins inbounds under the goal to Gibson, and he can't put it in. Gaston City comes away with it, down by three, pushing it up the court. Walker trying to deflect it from behind. Three-point lunch from the corner. Bam! Whoa. Number five. There you go. Another. Half flat, three pointer. Oh, there's way too many turnovers Gassi by the Vikings. Gets it. Way They're bringing too many. it up. Penetration 23. Back door. Two points. Gaston now with a two-point lead. Now for the, the Viking guards, they've got to get better with their hands. They're, they're turning the ball over way too much on the dribble. The Gaston crowd are up on their feet. Vikings looking for an opening. Wiggins look to Coach Ward for direction. Nelson up top. Collins. Two minutes and 35 seconds. 
The Gaston defense presenting problems for Huffman right now. Yeah, they're packed in a little bit. They're back Inside down the Inside the walker, he finds room for two. Nice job, nice job. Finally moves it around and was patient. Yes. We're getting the ball. And we got a contact foul. Gaston City will inbound the ball over here next to us. Two minutes and 14 seconds. Score tied at 26. Yeah. Step back. No, pass it to the wing. Air ball. Save. But Wiggins gets it. He goes. Cuffs it. And he's fouled. Oh, fouled yes. That's how to go strong to the hoop. They're either going to let you get it or they're going to get a foul, send you to the charity strike. The charity strike. Wiggins will go to the line for two shots with two minutes and one second remaining before halftime. They're really getting up and down the floor right there. He makes the first. That's point number six for Wiggins. You know, again, I made the point. I just want to see the the the, uh, the guards for for the and Vikings the ha ha handle the ball a little better. That you know, work on that. One fifty nine for halftime. Into the paint, finger roll. Up and under for number 15. Wow. Be bad with the finger roll. Three. Collins for three. Pulls up again. And half flat. Three points. Collins goes down. Pump fake. Two point. McFadden, while you're laying on the ground on the charge that they didn't call, instead of getting back in the game, McFadden continues to play and gets an easy layup right Nelson up under the basket. to Collins. Turnover. Again, another turnover. Another unforced turnover. 54.3 seconds remaining before halftime. Huffman clinging to a one-point lead. McFadden bringing it up for the Titans. As we get ready for halftime and the halftime party that is customary on BCS under the lights. Nice finish. Uh, uh. That young man is having uh, a game. Yes, he is, and he's taking it right to him into the paint. No hesitation by him whatsoever. Wiggins backs it out. Wiggins working, taking it, he tips it away. 13.7 seconds. Before halftime. Huffman will inbound it underneath their goal. Number 33, Kendrick Berry, comes back in for Gibson. Huffman really hasn't been able to use their height after those first few minutes. Wiggins gets it in the corner. He can rise up over 32 as the clock goes down, but he gives it inside to Nelson, who forces Still his way in, misses the shot. College for three, no. And they can't get a shot off. Halftime. And the score is 32-31. Gaston City with a one-point lead. One-point lead. That's what we're talking about, using your size and finishing the play. Right there was a good example. Down low, clearly you have, have the uh, uh, size advantage over the Gaston player, and we're not finishing. All right, we're going to go down to uh, an interview with Coach Ward with Fred Davenport. Take it away, Fred. 
All right, Coach, you all are going into halftime, uh, halftime down by one point. Uh, tell me about your feelings about this game. Just mistakes, 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 simple mistakes. We're scared of the ball, turn it over again. You know, just, just small stuff, all of the small. We're fixable. What will you tell your guys in the locker room? Uh, just, just play under control. We're just out of control. You know, you got to be a little bit more uh, under control. That's it. All right, Coach, we'll see you at the end of the game. Back to you all. All right, you're getting a look at the Huffman Viking Award winning cheerleaders. They do a great job. We said it earlier today. You know, they do a good job. They, their tumblers are just unbelievable. I get dizzy watching them going, doing tumbling myself, watching them come down the floor. I know, man. They are phenomenal here at Viking Gymnasium on the campus of Huffman. High School, Birmingham City School. This first BCS under the light. Steve, on this first half, what do you got, man? I mean, what, what do you think about Gadsden's ability to stay with Huffman, even though there's still a height difference, the aggressiveness on the, 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 the side of Gadsden? Yeah, it started off with Huffman controlling seemingly the game with their, their defense. We're able to get out to a lead, and then all of a sudden the physicality of Gaston seemed to show up, and uh, that physicality caused Huffman kind of to lose their height advantage. Okay. Now, real quickly, Huffman on their end, what do they need to do to keep going? Huffman is going to have to move the ball a little better, and I think be a little more creative in getting the ball inside to their big men. They definitely have a height advantage with Walker and uh, with, with uh, uh, our guy Barry in there, I think they need to move the ball and take advantage of that. All right. Well, I guess we need to get ready, take a look and get some, pay some bills. Yeah, we're going to pay some bills right here as we go down the list and they get ready for the halftime land, line dance. Brett? Here we go. Congratulations to the Winona Ladies Dragons champions. They are the 2023 Alabama High School 5A state flag football champions. And what's great about this is that they're the champions, but Birmingham has not had a women's flag football program for more than two years, two or three years. Yeah, yeah. And now they bring back a state championship. So congratulations to the Winona Lady Dragons on their flag state 5A state flag football championship. Right, and the player of the game uh, was quarterback Samaria Franklin, Samaria Franklin for the Winona Dragons. Uh, you may know her as an outstanding point guard who we'll get to see later this week when we head out to Winona. So now, now Coach Lane is, is doing this thing over there with flag football. Now, playoffs. We have to give congratulations to the Rams and the Parker Thundering Herd for an impressive runoff. You know, they did a playoff run. We are proud of their work and we have accomplished on and off the field. So you have, you know, the semifinal appearance in the 6A by Parker and the 5A football runner up to back-to-back uh, -to -back championship game appearances by the Ramsey Rams. Yeah, a lot of fallout, man, for both of those teams. Those expressions kind of a foreshadowing of, of how those squads are right now. Parker uh, fell short, what, in the semifinals uh, and didn't make it to the championship. Uh, Ramsey got there yeah. and uh, fell short. And yeah. uh, a lot of lot of fallout and consternation behind both of those losses. And certainly yeah. uh, a lot to be proud of both of those teams after a great season that came up short. Uh, and they'll be back at it next year. Ramsey in an interesting situation some 26 seniors they'll be saying goodbye to. Uh, Parker, uh, not so much so. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you losing, what, Beeman, Crawford? Yeah. Well, Crawford, uh, yeah, Beeman, uh, Crawford, uh, you're going to be losing about five guys. You got their big running back. Who's Rundage. Rundage is who, who he's going to be uh, going. Uh, you know, interesting story on, on, on Brundage. You know, he wants to be an arrow space engineer. Okay. That's so what he's going to Tennessee in. State? No, he's going to, I forget the school he was telling me he's going to, but that's what he's interested in. Okay. Well, sir, again, congratulations to those squads and those fan bases for the good job that they did getting as far as they did. They did. Great job. The BCS has a net. So you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
Stay in the know on school happenings all year around and follow us today. Don't forget, the BCS uh, has an app, so you can follow. The BCS Specialty Schools applications are open. BCS Specialty Schools application process for the 24-25 school year. Now, the CR code will only work for applicants wishing to apply to Epic, Phillips Academy, Princeton, WJ Christian, 6 through 8, and Ramsey IB High School. So you can go to that and you can get those appearances. You know, it's great to have those uh, things, technology now that you don't have to just do it on a paper application. So success starts here at the BCS. Now, courtside high school hoops edition. December the 14th on the 20, 2023, we have the Ramsey Rams at the Winona Dragons. And the girls will tip off at 6 p.m. and the boys will follow. That is going to be an exciting game that you're going to be seeing here on the BCS Under the Lights Courtside Edition. And if you are interested in your business, you can become a sponsor as we showcase our student athlete sponsorship segments are available to be featured for for more information contact nikki seaborn today at seaborn at bca bcm.k12.al.us bcs under the lights shining on students and athletes come be a part of it and the official halftime sponsor AEA, the Alabama Education Association, is one of our proud halftime sponsors, and they continue to support the BCS Under the Lights Courtside Edition, as well as everything that we've been doing here at BCS Under the Lights. Great to have them. And sponsored by our guy, James W. Brown at AFLAC, District Sales Coordinator. Give him a call. 205-945-1130. That's 205-945-1130. James W. Brown, District Sales Coordinator for AFLAC. And our Scholar Athletes of the Week is sponsored by Jax, all about the South. We welcome Jax and we appreciate them being a part of the BCS Under the Lights sponsoring the Scholar Athletes of the Week. Jacks, all about the South. Well, as you can see, both teams now have come back out of the locker room with a minute and 17 seconds left. We've had a great game. It's a one-point game, 31-32, that the Gadsden Titans are ahead of the Vikings of Huff. Outstanding. Just surprised about the size difference that you do see with the Huffman Vikings against Gadsden. However, Gadsden has not, they have made sure that that does not come into play. They continue to play very tough down in the paint. Now, for Gadsden, one of their top players, number 22, the sophomore, Jacoby Sharp. He is the main guy who has been keeping them into the game. He has been playing inside and he has been playing outside. However, Huffman, they've been being more of a team about it. You still have Wiggins who is shooting and we've got one of our own sharp shooters, Jordan Collins, the senior who's been shooting the lights out from three and that's who's keeping right now Huffman, uh, keeping them on the heels of the Gadsden uh, Titans. However, I think that in this next half, I think that the Vikings are going to settle down and they're going to start using their size on the inside to start uh, taking advantage of Gadsden. However, Gadsden is very aggressive. Uh, they're not backing down physically. But I think that the size of the Vikings should start to maybe take a part in, in, and make a play and start to give them an advantage in the second half. So. The Vikings' height should start playing. I think they should start playing 
and getting ready to uh, uh, take advantage in this second half. That that's just my anal That's how I see it. Hey Steve. man, that's great, man. That, that that sounds good, and I believe you're dead on it. Wiggins looking for something, and it's thrown away. That combination of uh, McFadden and Sharp yeah. has been lethal for Gaston City. Absolutely. Spin move. Block. There you go. There the you go. Height. Let's start getting that height advantage in there and let's start playing a, a smart game for the Vikings. Nelson on the wing. want to get it inside. You think that's one of the things that Coach Ward has stressed over the halftime? I, I would think so. But can they do it? Because Gaston is a strong team down there. Turnover. Not the turnover. Come on. Long pass. Working that perimeter. Walker defending. Goggles gets it. Only for a moment. Jumper, three-pointer, good. Again, we said it coming to this. There's another Al Black three-pointer. Brett, we said it. Yeah. Gaston looks very athletic and strong. And they're a tough team. They're playing tough. Wiggins. Right back in. Answers. Half flat. Three pointer. James W. Brown, sales consultant. Goggles for three, and he misses. McFadden. Gaston pulls it out. McFadden drives. Euro, two points. Oh my Just over the lip of the rim. Wow, he went in there with, the, as you say, the Euro step and tossed it in. Guys, they've got to get more physical. Gaston, the Vikings have got to become more physical. And Gaston is looking a bit more ready to respond to this there third we go. quarter. We've got two points for, for the Vikings. There you go, Walker on the inside. Use that, he's 6'6". Six, six. Get it to him, yes, let him use that height. McFadden is really being ball dominant. Oh my what goodness. A finger roll. McFadden Whoa. don't be so mean. <laughs> wow, look at this kid. Wow. Wiggins against the goggles, crosses him, step back, jumper, no. And we got a foul underneath the goal amongst the big men. There we go. My man, Goggles Paisano over there, number one. He's uh, That's a Fred Flintstone. Remember the Fred Flintstone character, Goggles Paisano? Yeah. Well, he's, <coughs> he's hanging in there. He hangs in there. Inside, but he is playing tough. He is. Matthew Lucas. Wiggins inside. and got a foul over the back. Quite an exhortation from number three. Lucky he didn't get a tech there. Yeah, he's been bumping his gums a little bit Good. when he comes in. But that's okay. You know, guys have got to start. Walker, go. nice. Nice design. Schemed him open and he finished. Kevon Walker, one of our scholar athlete of this week. McFadden working it. I like his handles too, Brett. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's what I say. They're, these guys are one of these dangerous teams. Blocked by Walker. Barry gets on the floor for it. It's going to be a travel. He flipped. He but turned he's over. But he's hustling. Yeah, he's hustling. He's hustling. But yeah, Gaston is one of one of these 
dangerous teams where, you know, everybody is like a, a, a small forward almost. Yeah. You know, they yeah. all can dribble, they all can shoot. They have good skills. Huffman comes away with the turnover. Wiggins pump fake and draws a foul. Yeah, they're dangerous. They they have, you know, four guys, five guys on the court. They all can handle the ball. Yep. They all can yep. shoot it with good form. Let's check out this block right here, this foul. Actually, it's a block at the other end. Yes, Walker just rejecting it. As we come back to live action, Wiggins picks up his first free throw. No. Walker will get a break here. Let's see if this is going to have an impact on the game. Walker coming out right here. Does that open it up for Gats to come right. down in the middle? Because this presence ha has been felt this third quarter so far. Wiggins misses them both. Rebound, though, Ooh. by Barry. He missed the bunny. Wiggins went up high, and he missed the bunny. Come on, guys. You got to execute and finish those. Long pass stolen by Nelson. McFadden didn't see him waiting in the wing. Euro and a finger roll. There you go, Nelson. Right yeah, back at you think it was Ginobili. Goggles at the other end, though. Two points. Back and forth we go. Nelson to Gibson. Gibson drives, spins in the lane to Wiggins. Two points. Nice play. We're getting dump. back and forth action, Brett. There we go. Way to dump it off so Wiggins can finish it off. Way to penetrate down there on uh, uh, Gibson. Fadden gives it up. Nice redirection and drive. Can you see that? <laughs> Two points. Zero up and under. Can't. I, he just threw that up with a prayer. He did. But they're throwing it in the right direction. They're doing prayers, but they're throwing it up in the right direction. They're used to being an undersized team, look like. They know how to yeah. do the up and under, and the dips are good. Short jumper miss. Lucas with the rebound, and he's off and running. He's going to try to go with the Euro. <laughs> he's missed it. He doesn't lack confidence to go in there with the trees. Gadsden seems to just be more physical. They just seem to be a more physical team, and Huffman just doesn't like it. They really are playing them much more physical than the Vikings. You know, we said first half, again, a team yeah. like this is dangerous. They, yeah. they yeah. have that toughness that a finesse team may or may not can respond to well. So let's see how the Vikings do here. Again, Gaston City with a one-point lead. Exciting second half. Two minutes. Wow, this third quarter's gone fast, Brett. It actually has. Huffman looking for a crease. Collins, who's been affected from behind the three-point line, is in the game. He's looking. He's sizing them up, but, but they know it. They're coming out to him. Nelson inside the walker who's back in the game. Oh. But he puts it low, taps it out. Sure. Collins, no. I want to see Collins set his feet. Collins has a good shot yeah. when he sets his feet yeah. Yeah. and goes up. But when he shoots off balance, he's not hitting that shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 138 remaining in the third quarter. Gaston City holding on to a one-point lead. Penetration. Collins is there with him. Three-pointer off the back iron and drops through an half-flat three as Huffman pushes up quickly. De deflected and stolen, and we got a foul on the play. And this is what I'm looking at. I think Huffman is being lackadaisical with their pass. You said it in the They're, first half, Brett. Now they, they, they just don't see any urgency about getting the ball being crisp with their passes. They're very lackadaisical. Too many turnovers. And they haven't had a chance to press either. So that defensive advantage has been negated. Lucas working against Nelson, who gets it up to Sharp. He's been silent third quarter. I guess he's trying to make his presence better. He misses two easy ones at the rim. Well, not two easy ones, but two close ones. Vikings push it up. 
kick, kick it out to Co Collins. Collins back to Wiggins, but he's in a crowd and he loses it. Gaston is off and running. Nice three on one break for two. The Titans have a six point lead. Defense! Yes. Defense! And their crowd is taking over in here. Defense! 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 The home crowd is solid. What gives, Greg? <laughs> Walker. Oh, they needed a three they needed that. from Walker. That was a big bucket by Walker. Huge. For defense for, for Huffman. Three You're corner. Right. You are letting guys get it past you way too easily. Three seconds. He tries to get it to Walker, and he gets it off. But they're blowing it off. They're they blowing it off. Blowing it off. Brett, I think that basket was good. Let's see. Let's take a look and see what was good. Let's see. No good. We're they getting it from the truck. In the they say truck, it, no it good. wasn't good. Outstanding idea by the official. We've got that replay coming up. Gaston with a three point lead. 48 to 45. I just think for me, I just don't like the way Huffman allows guys to blow by them on the defense. You know, they they can't be that much faster than you. They may be reaching a little too much. That's the shot again. Ah, there it is. I couldn't see the clock. I couldn't see the clock. Yeah, none of us could. He's backing that, backing that thing up for us there. Okay, yeah, okay, zero's there. Is it out of his hand, guys? It's still in his hand at zero. Great eye by the official. That's why they get paid the big money. <laughs> Wonderful call there you by go. officiating crew. 48-45 as we prepare to begin the fourth quarter at Viking Gymnasium. This is a tough and a scrappy Gaston City program. Now, I believe Gaston City is 7A. I believe they are 7A. 7A, yeah. Gaston All inbounds right. it. Here we go, the final stanza. Here we go. Can the Vikings go ahead and make this charge, shut it down, get some stops here, and let's play some physical basketball. Lucas to McCants. Big number 32 gave him a, a nice screen there with a shoulder shiver. He spins with his good ball handling. Gives it to Lucas, who that little underhanded handoff by Let me Lucas tell you, has been ineffective. For Gadsden, number 32, I'm going to call him Charles Barkley. He looks like Barkley. He's a big guy. He's, he's a big nimble, guy. He's very nimble. Yeah. Good handle. Gaston City employing the pressure. Gaston is 6A, so if Huffman wants to get you see, to the again, promised a very land, they may have to cool this team again. Pass that's broken up. Yeah, yeah. You know, you see finesse teams get into that funk sometimes, man. They, 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 you know, they, they get careless with the ball, and that's what we're seeing. And they got a foul. He couldn't finish. Walker but he'll go to the line. You know, he's a junior, but he's got to start to grow up now. We saw him come up a few notches against Pinson. Mm -hmm. He did, which we did. Yeah. Very impressive. So we know what he can do yeah. against the big boys. And he makes his first free throw. There you go. Now. He has 15 points. <laughs> Even though there's been a solid 15, it's not like it doesn't seem as if he's been doing it to that level. But yeah, he's the lead scorer uh, for the Vikings. But we have a, a lane violation. Wiggins with 12, the second leading scorer. Don't you hate that, coach? Why give him an extra free throw? The small thing. And there he goes. He right there. Every time. 48 47. Gaston with the one point lead. Penetrate. 
dished, and he missed the close one. It finally bit the tight Wiggins, and he called the block. Got a block there. Yes, Lucas was moving his feet. Well, that's what Wiggins and the, and the rest of the offense for the hub, they've got to attack. Yeah. They've got to start to attack. All right, let's look at that one. We see the we see the block. end of the play. Yeah, we saw the block there. And we got a timeout. Huffman with your score. Huffman, 47. The visiting Gaston State Titans, 48. Seven minutes even to go in this game. And Gaston City is getting together the JV team. The girls team, the parents are cheering them up. Let's take an idea. We'll be right back. Scholar Athletes of the Week, sponsored by. You know, Brett, uh, one of the things that, I, that I, I failed to mention, you know, a couple weeks ago I mentioned that uh, former Alabama State wide receiver, top receiver in the SWAT, Keyshawn Johnson, announced he was leaving Alabama uh -huh, State right. in the transfer report. Yeah. What I didn't say was that he played for Ramsey. His connection to the uh -huh. BCS, he played basketball at Ramsey and football did, Keyshawn. And, uh, you know, the value, I thought about him because the value of those scholar athletes, one of the schools that is offered him is Vanderbilt University. They, whoa. <laughs> so not only did he show he has the talent to, to, to go there and play there, and the he academics. has the scholarship, he yeah. has the academic yes. to thrive there. So kudos to all of our BCS scholar athletes who are getting it done on and off the field. Well, this game is, is, is getting down, man, to a good point. And Huffman just put up a, a long one, got their own rebound, and they put it back. There you go. 4-2 to give them a one-point lead. We up, the crowd said. Gaston trying to make something happen. A short pop, and Man. it's good. Another skilled ball player making a good shot. Curry, Keyshawn Curry for the Titans. Wiggins sizing up sharp. Give it go. Stolen. Left-handed finish. Number five. Curry. Wow, one thing about Gadsden, they are not afraid. They they are fundamentals on layups, left and right hands. They are going to finish the That's shot. another one of those things, Brett. Get your points on your inbounds under the goal, and you got to make your free throws and your layups. Yes, yes. Those three things for me are, are almost tantamount to, you know, the, 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 the turnover margin in football. Absolutely. Looking for a good shot. They're being patient. Down by three. No time for errors. Five minutes to go in the game. Inside, oh. no. That entry pass was not good as they tried to get it in the walk. Put something on it. I want to see Barry back in the game at this junction. Play on that height. He's on the bench now. Gaston taking their time. They have a three-point lead. They're just opening it up, letting their ball players work. Deflected out of bounds. Collins goes out now. He's going to stay here with Gadsden. Four twenty-three in the game. Gaston, opportunity here to get a good inbound. McFadden with the ball. Lobbed it over the top to Sharp, and it's blocked by Walker, but retained by McFadden. Sharp, no. Walker, rebound. 
He's having that game, Brett, I he think is. you said. Wiggins. He and Wiggins are outstanding dynamic. There you go. Now you start Wiggins. To Can you imagine those guys as seniors next year? Wiggins mm -hmm. and Walker. They're going to be a great, even, an even greater inside out combination. Oh, yeah. Walker against McFadden. Good defense by Walker on a very skilled player. Yeah, Walker looks like he's starting to get a little confidence about his defense with this guy. I agree, so, Brett. Starting to put his hand in there. It's okay. Be aggressive. Guard him, Kevon. You got him. One point game, 344. There you Deflected, go. Deflected, sharp, up strong, misses. He got his own rebound. He continues to flex underneath that goal. The sophomore. He's bowing up. He's bowing up, Brett. Yeah, he, he feels very confident in his skills. Wiggins. In and out. Walker. Oh. Wiggins. Wiggins again. Blocked, but he's fouled. The young fellas for the Vikings. There you go. Scrapping. That was a battle on the inside yeah. on those rebounds. But you have way too many miss, again, way too many miss opportunities under the bucket. Oh, wow. 10-point lead if they had hit 80% oh, of them. Oh, my goodness. Wiggins to the line for two. Swish. <laughs> Top ball game. No, 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 no. One-point deficit. 54 Hold on now, catch me up. Two point deficit, 54 52. Swish, he makes them both. Got a 20 second timeout, full timeout. One point game. Now this Three is the Three minutes burn. and eight here seconds, go. buddy. Yeah. Here this we is go. How we do it. What you made up right here. Yes, now, what sir. are you in there? What is Coach Ward? telling this guys right now. Oh man, Brett, uh, he's probably telling them to one, and when they defend, keep the guy in front of you. Don't reach. Move your feet, and don't commit any fouls at, at this juncture. Offensively, they need to keep them moving the ball like they are. If Wiggins gets a break and a crease where he can penetrate, he needs to do so. Right. If, if, Waller, if Walker can seal on the post, yep. they need to get it to him, and he needs to turn and shoot. Well, I think these guys also cut down on the turn off, oh, turnovers. You said cut that. the turnovers out. Let's go in. If we're going to the if we're going to the rack, go in there aggressive and go in there knowing you're going to get hit. Right. Finish the play. Very good observation, Brett. Three minutes and eight seconds in this contest. like Gadden City up there having a party. They are enjoying themselves. They are. Huffman. You see it there on the split screen. Yeah. Getting a little groove going on in the stands. They're feeling good. Got them a nice bus trip back with their friends tonight. We'll probably stop, get them a little something to eat, and get on back home. They might stop at Jack's, get something to eat. I hope they do stop at our corporate sponsor, Jack's. The Southern Original. 308. Here we go, back to live action. They've got to get a stop here. They got to, Brett. Got to get a stop. Be aggressive. Stop letting the player get in front of you. That's right. Keep the ball in front of you. Don't reach. McFadden, the dangerous one. Step back. Oh, he missed it. Walker with the rebound. Nice job. All right, Vikings. 237. No turnover. The Viking crowd is a bit subdued here. Even the cheerleaders uncommonly quiet. Inside the barrel, who's back in the game. Oh, oh. in and out. But Walker is there. Come on. And he misses the bunny. Walker gets it back. Into the corner, Gibson pumps, throws it oh. away. Two minutes and eight seconds. Jump, stop, and a foul. Wow. 
another turnover at a key opportunity. We missed. There were two inside plays that they should have gone ahead and, and, and put those ball, put the ball into the hoop. Two of your keys, but, Brett. She said, stop missing the close ones and stop making turnovers. They did them both on that crucial drive. That crucial possession, I should say. All I right. Know, I know Coach Ward is pulling his hair out. Oops. <laughs> well, like me, but, he doesn't have you know, any on his look, head. So. He's a good guy. But <laughs> he may have rubbed know, it out. I, I, I know he's 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 beside himself on some of those things that they're doing right now. But I mean they're inside working, but we've, we've got to start executing on this right now. This time of the season, you you, you know, there's no more. We're, we're getting better. Yeah. So now, now, now we've got to start executing. You're right. These, these, these are the last one or two games where, yeah. you know, you, you got you have room for improvement. Yeah. But at yeah. a certain point, you're just who you are. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and teams normally reveal themselves about the midway through the season in basketball. Yeah. And then, like I said, you know what you got going into region play. Yeah, uh, yeah, some, yeah. Some cats are going to lose playing time. Others are going to gain. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Who I'm trying to look at there is a, a bear. That's why I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, and he drew that one. He drew it well. He knew it was coming. And, and to your point, yeah. go up like you know you're going to get hit. Yeah, you're going to get hit down here. That's right. Nice play to draw the foul. Two minutes and three seconds remaining in this contest. Sharp makes the first. McFadden's back in the game. Sharp's in the game. Williams, who we like to refer to as... Uh, and he makes the second. Giving him 19 points on the night. Leading score of the game. Two minutes remaining. Huffman down by three. Nelson pushing it up. Gibson walking with the seal. He better get out of there. They're going to get a three seconds. The strong man, your Barkley, is defending. But there Walker says, I don't care. Two points. Kevon Walker to bring the Vikings within one. McFadden controlling it, working against Walker. 123 to go. Short jumper, McFadden, true. Nothing but net. He's hard to handle, bro. He's hard to handle. He moves. He, he handles the Time ball out. with confidence. He does, when he comes man. in, if you give him that little short teardrop, he's going to take it. Yeah, he's dangerous, man. Nice mid-range. Fill it up from the three, and he can drive, finish at the rim. I think that Wiggins is going to have to be put on uh, number 22, uh, 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 Curry. Not Curry, I'm sorry. Going to have to put, be, he's going to have to play sharp, and he's going to have to play chest up on him to stop him. Even if it slows his game down a little bit, you've got to take the, you've got to stop sharp for uh, Gadsden. You've got to be. Chest up. You're going to have to just be very aggressive. You're going to have to explode. Stop letting playing defense on the back of their hip. Right. Minute 16, down by three. Gaston City is in a full court press. They're going to make it difficult for the Vikings. They get it. Oh, he, draw, he drew the foul. Smart play by Nelson. There you go. That's how to do it. Yeah, he extended himself a little bit to draw that foul. Now, they're not in the penalty yet. They're not in the bonus, I should say, nor the penalty. A minute 15 left. Okay, they get it in. You're going to have to make good passes. Stay out of that corner. Ah, oh, got to be careful now. Walker trying to seal it down low. He's got the size advantage. Wiggins sizing him up. Pick and roll with the two of them. Step back. Walker for three. Oh. In and out. Nice shot. Lucas with the rebound for the Titans. He's under some duress, and he gets it to McFadden. Coach Ward is calling for the press. They got sharp trap, but Titans break it. 38 seconds and counting. <coughs> Foul. 
That was a good play, pick and roll. They went with Wiggins. Wiggins gave it back. That was a pick and pop. Walker popped back behind the yeah. three. Had a good look. Good look. Just didn't stay down. It just rimmed in and out of there. I thought that was, I thought it was good. Good shot, good look. So Gaston City again underneath their goal with the inbound. Stolen by Wiggins. Oh, he couldn't control it though. Tie up. <coughs> Huffman ball. H Hustle pays off. Another chance here for the Vikings. 29.4 seconds. Do you go for the quick three? Mm. Or do you go inside hoping to, to draw the three? I say go for the quick three, anticipation of the rebound, and to get another chance at it. Steve, I'm going to tell him go to the rack. I think they're going to foul him in there. Let Go for it. Anticipate. You're going to get hit. Get the two. Let's go get it on the strike. And, you know, I think if you have, uh, if you find Walker Seal down there, that's not a bad option. Sure, yeah, yeah because he can't finish, and he can indeed drop yeah. foul. Yes. 29.4 seconds, the crew. 58, 55. Yes. The Gadsden crew over there, as they were saying, are getting it up. Yeah, over they are. There. They are. <laughs> They're getting it up over there. Huffman's crowd is a bit subdued right here, right now. As the Gaston City coaches are working the officials. I don't know what the controversy is. But they are adamant that something happened that shouldn't have. Well, he's been working the the officials, the Gadsden City head coach, been working the officials the whole game. So Hummel brings it up. They're not in a rush. 24 seconds. They look like they're going to just try to win it on a three. Oh! oh. Peyton lost it. Took his eye off it. They Turn have over. 19 seconds. They have 19 seconds. He was trying to get it and, and move at the same time. Substitutions for the Vikings. Vikings have left a man down. They see him at the last minute. I almost yelled out. I guess I could have done that, Brett, since we're <laughs> home. Oh, and they steal it again. He gets back. Huffman gets it back. And they get a timeout. Time there you go. Good All hustle. 16.2 right. seconds. The All ladies right. that were leaving have stopped at the door. All right, Coach Steve Brown, what are you telling you guys over there? You got it you on your head. Same, same, same thing. You, you take your quick three. You got time to get a good shot. I want to set me up a pick and a roll uh, to get somebody open, maybe a screen. Try to get somebody. Actually, I would try to run somebody to that opposite corner from this side. Mm -hmm. Let a catch and shoot in that corner. And then you got an opportunity to get a rebound with some time to, to put it back if you miss. If you hit, now you got to get ready for your lockdown defense. Uh -huh. You want to match up man to man, find the point guard, deny the ball from him. I'm denying the ball from McFadden and uh -huh. 22, but I want 32 trying to force the ball up the court and dribbling to make the Who's last taking time. your shot? Uh, I'm going to Wiggins, but, but I would not be upset with, with Walker taking that shot if we can get him. In fact, why don't they run a pick and pop just like they did? Wiggins is over, open. Bam! Oh, there it is! Three pointer. And we got a foul. With eight, with 6.9 seconds. Nice scheme by Coach Ward. Oh, there you go. Nice there scheme. There you go. Even better shot by number 12, Timothy Austin. Replay right here. That was his first field goal of the game. He puts it in a huge one. Right Boom. Yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. Trust Timothy us. It was Austin. in there. True. True. Nice shot. Well, Brett, there's no question 8. about that. 8.9 seconds in this game. 
think we're going to overtime? I, I, I say we're going to, hey, what we've got to do, <laughs> what we have got to do. Look at this replay again, Brett. What an exciting play. Everything was on the line. They kept hustling. They had to keep scrambling. What, they had two turnovers within those final 30 seconds. They get it back, and Austin just puts it up true. Puts it up true. And he had a little Ant Antoine Walker in him. Yes, too. he did. Did you see him? The way he posed after that one. He said, he yeah. said, he Throw said back. nice, deep. I'm in there. When it left his hands, he said, count it. That's right. All he needed to do was walk out with the shit, man. He would have had it. All right, man. 6.9 seconds. Gaston is dangerous. So you can't count him out. They've got to go the whole length of the floor. Huffman in the full court press. I got to stand on this one, Brett. The Huffman crowd has awakened after a long slumber. McFadden looking to take it out. Gets it in. Back to McFadden. Looks like he's going to take the shot. He drives. No whistle. And we go to overtime. They let them play ball. They let them play. I love it. They let them play. I love it. Let it let it in on the court. There you let go. The, let them play. Let the players determine the outcome. And we have overtime on BCS under the lights on Monday night. Edition. On a Monday, Monday night. night. This is better than Monday night football, <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. You better call somebody. You better tweet them, X them, Facebook, TikTok, or Snapchat. Because they have missed a great four quarters, they still have time to see this overtime. Let's see that shot again that tied the game. Who was that, Brett? Timothy Austin, I Timothy believe. Timothy Austin, the junior, 6'3", pulls up right behind. Wiggins passes it off to Timothy Austin, pulls up. Bam. No doubt that it was a three-pointer, no doubt. And the crowd goes wild. You see the camera shaking, the students, the parents jumping. My, 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 what a big time shot in the clutch, Brett. There you go. That, hey, big time players come through at big times. There you go. Now, Gaston City fought their way into the, back into this game after being down. Had the halftime lead. Led for the entirety, for the most part, of the second half. Do they face an emotional hurdle now, Brett? Now this is an emotional hurdle. Now Vikings, they are on a high. They have the momentum. They're home. They just pulled off a big three. This has been a contentious game between everybody. They've been going back and forth. Now it's like, okay, playboy, here we go. I'm there ready to go play. All right, we're going to jump it off. Four minutes is the rule for high school Alabama uh, basketball overtime. And our officials are about ready to toss it up. Here we go. And the Titans win the tip. So Austin picks up McFadden, who's been dangerous. Pick. Pick and pop. McFadden to Sharp. Sharp was silent in the second half, Brett. He was. He was. Had a, he had a couple baskets down the stretch. But he didn't dominate like he did the first half. Good defense, but they scored two points. Nice little drop off. Here we go, bring it back up. I think the difference is, honest with you, on defense is Austin. Austin is physical. He is pushing those guys right back. They're bouncing off of him. Oh, they missed the chance to seal it. Oh, bad pass. Turnover. Walker had, Turnover. had him sealed. And they could have gotten it from the wing, but they went to the high-low. And Barry threw it away. Full court pressure. They're getting four seconds. They, if, if Gaston's not careful, they're going to give him a five-second call to help him write it down. McFadden brings it up. Austin manning him. They set two picks. He, I, I was about to say he traveled. He got him on the offensive foul. Way to take the charge, Nelson yeah. being tough in the I middle. think the first thing they got was the charge before the travel. So, but either one, you're right, 100%. And you know, one Brett, of them was going to come. 
they've done a great job. I mean, you have not had to go in on the officials oh, as you normally yeah. do. No, no. <laughs> Wiggins on the spin, but Austin, your guy, strips wow. it. Spins right into the defense. And on cue, Austin used his muscle. McFadden has been controlling the point this second half. And they've been setting picks for him, trying to get him free to let him go to work. They found sharp inside, blocked by Barry. The defense is there for the Vikings if they can just convert. Nelson to Wiggins. Wiggins can be a little more aggressive here now. Yeah. Coach Carla Smith of the pre-show big three up on her there feet. There we go. Go to Behind it. Behind the desk. There it is. Walker. Bam. Bam. Three-pointer. Kevon Walker in overtime at our flat three. McFadden with the ball. Find some room. Nice bounce pass oh. to Austin. Austin spins back to McFadden. Shoots the air ball. Walker with the rebound. There now you he go. Gets nice, to defense. Nelson's. nice defensive play. Wade Walker came down with that ball. And Walker with the three, with the defensive stop on the rebound. He is coming out just as you requested, Brett. Wow. There we go now. Hey, I guess Walker says, You're looking for me? Here I go. <laughs> Nelson loses it. Austin to Lucas. One minute, 16 seconds. McFadden with it now. Bodies Walker. Walker defending the best offensive player in the second on. half. Oh, he got a timeout. Gaston City, one minute and five seconds to go in the first overtime. The score, 61 to 60. Huffman with the one-point lead. Yes. Good defensive play down there by Walker on the uh, uh, the defensive end to make that turnover and get it back. But we still have too many turnovers given up by the Vikings. Now, their aggressiveness. I'm glad Walker stepped back. Did you see how he stepped back? He and did. he took it with confidence. Yes, he did. Then give it to him. Let him get the ball. If he, that's, that's where he is. He Here's a shot it. of it right here. Right in here, the corner. bam. He pushed it up. Bam. Bam. Give it to him. Him and Austin feel very comfortable with that three point. Come so, on, Walker. You know, I, I don't know. Is he playing with a little more offensive intentionality than, than Wiggins right now? Uh, I think he is He's right now. He's not hesitating at all. I think a lot of people are coming on, on Wiggins because they're expecting him to get the ball. But now this is where you always say to your guys, next man up. This is where next man up is. This is it. There is no tomorrow. It's right now. So I'm glad to see that Austin and Walker have both stepped up big time and weren't scared to take the big shot when it was called for. Walker with 19 points right now. Inside the McFadden, spins, spins, misses that Come one. on, grab the ball. Austin with the rebound for the Vikings and the lead. Oh, he almost traveled there. Get it back to Wiggins. You heard some behind us, and they throw it out of bounds. Wiggins with another turnover. 49.8 seconds remaining. Huffman with a one-point lead. Not taking care of the ball. There you have it. Now you got it back in the hands of Gadsden. Lucas, 34 seconds. D3, shot a boom. Wow. And he didn't hesitate. 24 seconds to go in the game, 63-61. Wiggins with the ball, going baseline. He pulls up. Austin gives it back to him, inside the Walker. He's going, he forces, he draws the foul. There we go, that's go what I've been saying all intent. night. Go up there with intent. Let them foul you. What a shot was that by Sharp, man. That what was a shot. a shot. He was he about two or three steps behind the line, and he saw the crease and did not hesitate. And Sharp Walker to the line. It is a sophomore. He is a sophomore. And that's five fouls or 
on number five for the Tigers. Number five, that's Curry. Keyshawn Curry, he's done for the night with 13.7 seconds left. Two-point lead for the Titans. Walker to the line with two shots. 13.7 seconds remaining in our first overtime period. Walker. Oh! This is the first. Now, they need to get ready now for good defense. They need to be communicating, Brett. Oh, who, who has who? Who has because who? Because either way, you need a cover here. You need a steal. He makes the second, so get your man. Wiggins makes an attempt. Sharp is holding on to it. They intentionally foul, I believe. Or did they intentionally foul? Well, with 13 seconds, and I that's think that's not they a bad to. foul, because no, they, they're only going to get two shots here. So to still be a three-point deficit when Huffman gets the ball, and they can tie it up with a three. Who are you trying to get into the hands of Huffman if he if he's able to well, hit the I shot? Well, I, I want Wiggins hanging back with Nelson to help get it up if there's pressure on him. And I'll be comfortable with Austin in one corner, Walker on the, on the low post, and them doing some kind of two-man action to see if we can get both of them free and, and get it to whoever we see free first. Sharp makes the first free throw to make it a two-point deficit, and he makes it both. It's a three-point deficit. So with 11 minutes, 11.4 seconds remaining, the score is 65-62. Gaston City has a three-point lead right now. Brett, this game has really been exciting and going back and forth. Oh, this thing has... When it came down to the last, in the fourth quarter, we said something is about to happen here. The way that these guys were playing. Yeah. The defense, still, my only knock on this thing is Huffman's turnover. The whole thing. I don't think we're in, I don't think that we're in overtime if we don't have those many turnovers. No disrespect to Coach Ward, but if, if, if Coach Slater was their coach, <laughs> she, we would see it all over her face right now. That they yeah. need to work on turnovers and finishing. Oh, Let's yeah, here we go. Look at right this. Here. He just pulls oh, up. Man. Sweet. Look at him. He and knew he that falls. was good. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He dropped it in there with just about 27 seconds to go uh, in this overtime period. I will say, Gadsden folks come to town. They're going to have a good time. With yes, the they are. And they are enjoying themselves. We were doing the pre-show doing the, the JV game. I don't uh -huh. know if they won the JV game. Uh -huh. We know they were Trump in the in the girls game. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're partying right along anyway, keeping hope alive. That's the attitude, though. Have fun. Have a good time. All right. 11.4 seconds. Huffman is going to have to get it up the court. I stand again, Brett, for this exciting what might be the last play. Walker gets it to Nelson. Under pressure, he's riding it. They may foul him. They may foul him because he's only gonna get two shots right here. So that's not a bad foul, rather than giving them the opportunity to shoot three. Shoot a three, I should say. So he's got two shots. And they're down by three. So Brett, do you subscribe to the, if you I hit know, the first one I know what you're saying. miss the I second? I know what you're saying. Try to hit on that front rim, try to get it back to you. So let's see here. Why not? He's got to make the first one for that even to be a possibility. Oh. And he misses it. So now, do you, five seconds, do you, do you try to miss it, get a tap out by one of your big men? Do you hit it? I would hit it and try to trap hard immediately. Again, what I want to see are guys point to who they have. Right. I need somebody saying, I got three. I've got 15. you got two. He misses, they misses both. it. McFadden for Gaston City gets it, and he's fouled. So he'll go to the line. And it looks like Gaston City is going to walk away from here with the victory. Wow. Hard fought game and over went to overtime. 
Yeah, Nelson fouled out. McFadden to the line, 2.1 seconds. He makes the first. McFadden has really played a stellar game. Gaston has some weapons, man. They have, yeah. they have three good weapons. Uh, they can miss the second. Wiggins gets it. They're on the ground. Rolls out with two tenths of a second. Four point deficit for the Vikings. Only hope now is that they foul him on the desperation shot. He walked in front of him. It could have been close, but that is it. That is it. 66 62, Brett. Gaston City comes away with a hard fought victory here at Viking Gymnasium on the campus of Huffman High School. Yeah, overtime wow. win. Overtime. Overtime loss. Outstanding game, man. Yeah. Just hate had to come out on the losing end for the home standing Vikings. Yeah, outstanding game. You know, the uh, Vikings, again, I think turnovers are, go are going to be a key to this loss for them. Uh, I still like what the Vikings are doing down here. I think they're going to be good. They're still very young on what they're doing. Uh, they've got to learn how to finish. They've got to finish. All right, let's send it down to Fred Davenport. Fred, take it away with Coach Ward. So we're just having a conversation with our head coach, uh, Steve Ward. Coach, give me your final comments on tonight's game. Uh, like I said, we had a chance to win, a couple opportunities, just made some mistakes late and just turned the ball over. I mean, it happens. You got to take care of that ball, you know. Yeah, there was a lot of momentum right there at the end. You all went into overtime. Uh, Huffman Vikings that, you know, thought they were going to come out on top. Yeah. Uh, just talk about that, Coach. Well, like I said, we drew up a good play. Uh, young man made the shot. Tim Dawson made the shot. Uh, and like I said, we were up one with under 50 seconds to go and just turned the ball over. So, How do you keep your players uh, motivated, Coach, to keep uh, executing? Well, it's part of basketball. I mean, you got you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. All right, thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right. Good battle there uh, by Coach Ward and his Vikings. They just came up short, man. Yeah. And, and we saw signs mm -hmm. of a good team. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, I'll go as far as saying we saw a good team that showed signs of greatness, Brett. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you on that wholeheartedly, man. So. Yeah, the, the, these things that we saw here are fixable. Uh, yeah. Th yeah. Th this is just some, some uh, up and downs and some yeah. laps from fixing those layup misses and those yeah. turnovers. That, yeah. That's just a discipline thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure if, if Coach Ward, like I say, ask Coach Slater, she yeah. can give him a couple of drills yeah. off the top of her head <laughs> to take care of that tomorrow. And that's what I was, you know, the whole thing. You know, we've had this way too many loss, do too many losses of the handling yeah. of the ball. Way just too much of that. Too many so. turnovers and miscues, and uh, they missed at least 10 shots under the goal. Let's send it back down to, to, to Fred. All right, so we here, we're here with Justin Nelson. Uh, what position do you play? Point guard. Talk about your final comments on tonight's game. Uh, you know, tonight just wasn't our night. I feel like we could have did more small things, took more charges, more box outs, and most importantly, hit more free throws. Yeah, what were your thoughts when you all uh, went into overtime? Um, what were your thoughts on how the game would, would, would end? Uh, I just know me and my team, when we went to overtime, I was very positive. We just had an overtime win yesterday, so I was just very positive. Okay. All right, well, good luck on the next game, yes, and we'll see you then. Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, back to you all. Well, back. Good job, Fred. We're back. Uh, Brett, yeah, another outstanding job. You got Sharp, number 22 for Gaston Titans. Yeah. At 26 points. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say he did. I 26 would say he did. points. And yeah. uh, McFadden, the other weapon, 16 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they are yeah. A, an outstanding combination. Yeah, and uh, then they had the support staff. Absolutely. Uh, number five did a great job. Uh, what was number five's name? He had some moments there in the third quarter where he made a couple back-to-back -back baskets that were critical. Keyshawn Curry. Keyshawn Curry, that's right. Yeah. And then number 32, the big guy, was playing good physical defense on the low block, Brett. Th there you go, Trey Williams. He Trey came in and he played, we called him Barkley. Yeah, but yeah. But he came in and he played, he played some good defense and made some key, made some offensive moves. Yes, he day. did. Very nimble. And the, yeah. but, but the biggest shot of the night, the biggest play of the night, 
and, and we had some good ones because we had that we great sure shot uh, by Austin to, to tie it up, to send it in the overtime. But I think the guys are queuing up our our shot by Sharp that was, man, two two steps behind the yeah. three-point line, definitely in the college range. And uh, let's go down to the truck and look at that game-winning shot uh, by Gaston City. <laughs> That was just as beautiful. Look at man, he was four steps. Look how far he was man, behind the line. Yeah. He was almost at the NBA line, bro. Look at that again. Look at this. I mean, wow. He was further back than I realized. Wow, he was back there by the volleyball line. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Nice yep. shot. He put it up with confidence. By the sophomore. 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 Put it up like that. Wow. Great action, man. Great game. Exciting game. It just didn't turn out to our favor, mm -hmm. but I guarantee everybody in here was entertained by what they saw tonight. Yeah. Coach Steve Ward has his team on the right path, just as does Coach Lynn Slater. It's going to be a great season in Viking land. Uh, we look forward to hearing all the great things. Uh, they're going to spend some, 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 some good practice time. I think over the next two to three weeks, uh, mm -hmm. as, as their holidays, they're going to eat, they're going to practice. Because, see, I'm going to tell you, Brett, yeah. for me as a coach, this was a critical time when you gained a lot of ground. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, the average person is going to be a little little, little lazy. I, I know that word offends some people, but, yeah. but a lot of people are going to be lazy. They're not mm -hmm. going to want to practice. And I would get two a days in or at least yeah. a three-hour practice, yeah. serve yeah. lunch, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be a totally different team mm -hmm. coming back out of the break. Yeah, and a lot of times right now, this is where you're going to have to start looking at your, your film, like you said, getting here to, to, to see what we made our mistakes, and we've got to cut down on those things that are killing us, the simple things. We're not finishing at the, at the goal. We're not too many turnovers. Just way too many turnovers. Absolutely. Well, Brett is bill, bill playing line time, so let's get ready to pay some bills and get on out of here, Brett. Yes. I'll throw it over to you. I believe our first promo about the there champion. There we go. The 6A, 5A state flag, uh, ladies football flag championship winners, the Winona Lady Dragons. Congratulations on their 5A state flag football win. And for our playoff guys, congratulations to the Ramsey Rams and their 5A football run being runner-up and the Parker Thundering Herd 6A football semifinal appearance in the football playoffs. Congratulations to both of them, as well as the BCS has an app. Yes, we do. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Stay I mean, in the I know. I believe that Twitter is called X now. Oh, there you go. Stay hey. in the know. Hey. <laughs> Must, must may change it again. Who knows? There you go. All right. The BCS Specialty Schools applications are open. BCS Specialty Schools application process for the 24-25 school year. Now, the QR code will only work for applications wishing to apply for Epic, Phillips Academy, Princeton, WJ Christian, 6-8. Six to eight, and the Ramsey IB High School. So you can get those applications by going on the QR code. And BCS Courtside coming to you later this week. You get another episode of BCS Under the Lights Courtside Edition where we go to Winona High School for the second time this season yep. as Winona plays host to the Ramsey Rams. On December the 14th, this Thursday, 6 p.m. girls tip off, boys to follow. The Rams take on the Dragons. Yes, that's going to be exciting. Your business can become a sponsor of BCS Under the Lights as we showcase our student athletes. If you would like to be a part of this outstanding broadcast, contact Nikki Seaborn. Miss everything, Miss behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, Miss congeniality. Miss Line Dance Miss Queen. Miss AKA? Yes. C. Seaborn at bhm.k12.al.us. The official halftime sponsor is the Alabama Education Association. AA is a proud sponsor of BCS Under the Light and our proud halftime sponsor. 
And who's our three-point sponsor? Who else but the Aflac three-point sponsor? James W. Bound, District Sales Coordinator. Hit him up, 205-945-1130. James W. Brown, Aflac. And we had some three-pointers tonight. Didn't we? And the biggest one, the huge one, took it out in overtime by Mr. Sharp from Gaston City. As you get a look at the boys, BCS top five, and that's going to change from week to week. It actually yes, would it like is. to change within the week, Brett. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoyed reading uh, your top five. And as we go out looking at our Scholar Athletes of the Week, Leilala Brown, GPA 3.4 from here at Huffman High School, and Peyton Wiggins, a 3.5 GPA. Sponsored by Jax, our first corporate sponsor. Well, Brett, yep. we finished up game number three. We're not yep. even halfway in our season, and we'll be back this Thursday, as we said, with Winona facing Ramsey Rams from the Willie Hickey High Senior Gymnasium on the campus of Winona High School. Well, I'm your host, Steve Brown. This is my man, Brett Oates. It's been a great broadcast from here at Huffman High School. We're signing off and saying good night. We love you. Be safe. And we'll see you Thursday night.